Oh, Clint, you set me up to laugh right at, right at the start. Oh, boy. What up, SOBs? Uh, I'm Andrew Overdahl. Welcome to the Stream of Blood, Taste of Blood Tuesdays. Uh, the, your usual keeper, Jared Logan, is still spending time with his new baby. He's not tired of it yet, even after two weeks. So he's spending a little extra time uh, with his new baby. Congrats to uh, to him and uh, his wife. And yeah, they turned the keys over to me to run a game. And not just any game, but I get to run another game uh, that I made uh, that I'm very excited about. Uh, but right up top, I want to shout out Secret Keeper Clint Trucks, who's here with me behind the scenes. Uh, Clint... Thank you. No, oh, so fast. Um, you blink and you miss it. Uh, and yeah, so we'll we'll get started. This game we're playing tonight is called Valley Heat Lifestyle Watch. It's based on a comedy podcast called Valley Heat by Christian Duguay. If you're not familiar with it, don't worry. You don't need to be. The podcast Valley Heat centers around the... <laughs> trials and tribulations of its main character, a man named Doug Duguay and his kind of imploding life. Uh, Doug is not in this game. He's the, the Duguay family is not in this game, but the world of Valley Heat is here and the players are taking on other characters in uh, the world of Valley Heat. So without any further ado, let's meet our cast tonight. We've got some amazing players. Uh, your first player this evening uh, he is a stand-up comedian and an actor and a writer. Um, I've known him pretty much. Uh, we've known each other our, our comedy careers. Uh, he's a great. He's a great guy. Please welcome Troy Walker. Hey, how's it going? What guys? up, Troy? Thank you so much for doing the show. Up, and if Andrew? if my knowledge is correct, this is your first pen and paper role playing game experience ever. Correct. This is my first pen and paper <laughs> experience role playing game. Not I'm video game. Ex yes. Yeah. I'm very well versed. Yes. In uh, the other kinds of role playing games. So, yeah. Imagine that the power goes out forever and there's no more video games. This is kind of like that. It's like, right. what would video games be yeah. like in the saddest yeah. version of the world possible? Right. Like right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My character's going to hang himself like first thing. <laughs> wow. Well, it's a role playing game and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> It'll just really set kind of a grim tone, but thanks for the heads up. We'll just roll, roll with it. I thought this got... was the valley. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing. Your next, uh, your next player this evening. Uh, she is also a comic uh, comic actress. You can hear her on the, uh, she's on the Valley Heat podcast. She's also on the other hilarious narrative comedy podcast, 97.9 The Rat Race, uh, where she is a regular. Please welcome Beth Hoyt. Hello. Thank you, Happy Beth. Be here. Thank you so much for doing the show all the My way pleasure. from Texas. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And you have played. <laughs> You said it's darker <laughs> here. Congratulations to me for staying up late. Yeah, thank you. Well, we'll try to. I'm infamous for letting these run long. Not tonight. This is going to be a I'm two hour it. episode. It's going to, yeah, this will be, this will be the night. Uh, one way or the other, it will be. Clint will just literally unplug the, the equipment if it, <laughs> if it goes too long. Uh, but thank you so much. Thanks for doing the show. And you play oh, a bye. character on Valley Heat. Those of you who are familiar with uh, the Valley Heat podcast, you you play a character on that, right? I believe you are, if memory serves, you are Mike Bianca's wife who's cheating on him, right? Yeah. With the therapist? Yeah, with yeah. the therapist. Yeah. I love it. Nice. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. That's a good time. Valley Heat royalty. Uh, and last but not least, your your third player is the creator of the Valley Heat uh, podcast. He made it up. He does all the music. It's like an insane labor of love for him. Uh, but it's so funny. And he's also helped me develop this game, given me tons of feedback. Uh, and we play tested it uh, with people. Please welcome Christian Duguay. Save that energy, Andrew. Christian's internet dropped out. <laughs> Hopefully, he's he'll be amazing. Us momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Christian here he Duguay is. Christian is actually just Andrew's character. Yes, I'll be playing <laughs> Christian Duguay playing a role playing game. It's very meta. 
It's very amazing. Christian's back on. I can see that he is in the dark. I'm going to leave. We're going to reintroduce <laughs> him, and then hopefully he'll have turned the light on, and we're going to do this. Thank you. Maybe there can I only be it. one or the other. You know, Christian is stealing his Wi-Fi from the hotel next door. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, last but not least, and I also I could do a better intro. Um, he is the creator <laughs> of the Valley Heat podcast. He has helped me um, develop this game, but he's also a very funny stand-up comedian and an actor uh, and a comic writer. Please welcome, hopefully, Christian Duguay. Hey, am I here? Hey, you're here. Oh, hey, that was like, just in time. My God, I ran from the garage. Really bad internet issues. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, okay, we good. can hear you and see you. I think yeah. everything is everything's working. This is not. I had, a, I had a great setup. It looks so cool, and now I'm just in my bedroom. Oh, that's okay. It still looks cool. There's something that's like cool. a cool textured thing behind you that's interesting yeah. to look at. Yeah, that is cool. Oh, and there's the guitar that we probably hear that on the Valley Heat podcast. Another cameo. Thank you. Also, uh, yes, uh, silhouette yourself like you're giving us um, <laughs> uh, some information, some clandestine information in a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. No, it won't work when I need to do it on two. It won't work. Yeah, yeah, now it, of course, now it, now it auto. Auto focuses in. So this is our cast. Um, these three very funny people. Uh, and again, thank you all so much for jumping in and 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 playing this game. I'm very excited. And uh, we have play tested this game to a bit. But if you have any questions that pop up, either you, the audience, or you, the players, uh, just ask them because uh, I'd love to answer them. And hopefully, I have an answer for them. <laughs> but um, the game is super simple, and it's designed to be played. You know. By uh, by anybody pretty quickly. So, um, I guess first things first. Uh, why don't you each just introduce your characters, and then we'll we'll get into the uh, the nuts and bolts of the game. Okay. Um, my my character's name is her name is Sharon Kirk, and uh, she's a she's fifty four. She's a widower, and her uh, her hobbies are uh, karate. She's got a plan tonight. She's got it. She has to pick up um, some vanilla candles from the <laughs> farmer's market for she a lot of people call her um the candle master she, uh, she's like she designs she has designer candles most of them are squirrel themed uh but she does these little parties where she sells candles and she's got one coming up so she's really nervous about this one going well because she she kind of bought too many candles recently. She's got about seven thousand dollars worth of candles. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's oh, summer. summer's coming. coming. Yeah, yeah, it's starting to heat up. It's starting to heat up, and like some of them have already melted. And uh, her son, who doesn't live in Burbank, but he's visited, and uh, he recently borrowed a lot of money. So she really has to have this. This this party really has to pop. Amazing. And I just have a question with these squirrel candles: Is the wick on the head or the tail? Well, it's not. Here's how it works. It's almost like you remember Jurassic Park when there was like the mosquito in amber. That's so she's got like this very realistic looking squirrel inside of wax. It's a little macabre. It's a wow, little macabre. That's so, but as it yeah. melts, the squirrel is revealed. It's yeah. <laughs> terrifying. Truly terrifying. Um, Clint, if you don't mind pulling up that sheet again, I will walk everyone through uh, the sheet. So as they people are revealing their characters, we can, um, uh, everything will make sense here. But yeah, basically they've got a name, uh, they've got an age. Uh, your hobby is kind of like your class in other RPGs. It kind of outlines what you're, what you're good at. And we have the, uh, all the classic uh, uh, Valley Heat uh, hobbies. You can be, you can be into foosball, you can be into go-karts, you can be into frisbee. Uh, you can be into karate or you can be into crafts and they will kind of give you different advantages with different uh, skills. Uh, you can see that uh, you also have plans. Your plans are some kind of like very small, mediocre errand that you have to do at some point in the day. And if you don't get it done, you will uh, take some extra stress. You can see the stress markers under there. If you push a roll or get hurt, you take stress. Uh, if you fill that up, you have a breakdown, and if you have a breakdown, you can't use any of your skill modifiers. And then you have another uh, circle for injured. If you do something that's physically risky and you fail, you could wind up injured. And if you're injured, you can't use any 
of your physical skills. So going through the skills real quick. Uh, most of them are pretty self-explanatory, but some of them were kind of uh, weird. Uh, we have snoop, which is like your perception. If you want to like, uh, you want to dig through your neighbor's trash for a clue, something like that. Uh, you do snoop. Remember is your memory trying to recall information. Lie is lying to people. Uh, your body skills, you have zip. That's how fast you can move. Uh, you have Chicago style, which is your propensity, <laughs> propensity for uh, violence, both uh, actual violence and like promised violence. And then you have coordination, which is how coordinated you are. Like, like you be key, uh, not make a lot of noise. Can you uh, put together something fragile? And then l lastly, you have your soul skills you have businessy which is kind of like getting your way it's like emotional bullying uh it's convincing people of something uh that's true basically uh you have vibe which is just, it's just kind of like your your general vibe your ability to fit into social situations that you might not normally be a part of uh and your ability to put other people at ease and then you have gut feeling which is kind of like your intuition your instinct like how do you feel about what's going on how do you feel about what this person's telling you are they lying it could be your gut feeling so those are the skills uh pretty easy and then you see underneath there you've got your neighbors as you interact with people in the world your relationships will go up or down with them improve or degrade um which will change the way they interact with you so that's a character sheet and then there's space christian made these and he left space for you to draw uh, your character up there in the circle, which is uh, also amazing. Did anyone um, draw your character? I bet they didn't. <laughs> in, my, in my mind. Yeah. Look at this. Look at look Perfect. at her. She's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love there, there she, she is. is. That's Sharon. Sharon Kirk. Ah, oh, I love it. I love that okay, she's got so one of those Sharon... necklaces that looks like the um, hidden microphone necklace on like Bachelor in Paradise. In the necklace? Yeah, it looks like one of those on a reality show and they hide a microphone in a, like a <laughs> cocktail necklace. It would be cool if Sharon wears a fake hidden microphone necklace. Like she got it at one of those prop stores on Burbank where they offload props for, from shows. It's, <laughs> it's not functional, but she looks like a narc wherever she is. And, yeah. and Why are you wearing one puka, ch puka shell on a necklace? <laughs> Amazing. Um, great. Uh, and how about uh, Beth? Tell us about your character. Your character. Sure. This is a hundred percent coincidence. Your character is Christian, also we named are, Sharon. Are we sisters? <laughs> My character is also named I mean, Sharon. I mean, Sharon Kirk. You know, out of the kindness <laughs> of her heart, she always calls herself Sharon Number Two because that's how much she adores you. Yeah, I do appreciate Sharon Smith White, uh, you know, does need to be number one in the neighborhood. Um, one thing she's definitely number one at is foosball. And she got really good at foosball because she's had so much PT on her wrists due to she used to give herself blowouts every day. And so mm. all that blow drying was a lot of wrist injury. So she had to go to PT for it. She's but then she got healed and she continued to keep going. So her wrists are the most wow. phenomenal part of her body. And so she really excels yeah. at foosball. Yeah, um, I hear foosball is great therapy for wrist problems. Yeah. And anxiety and uh, yeah, and <laughs> pent up anger as well. Yeah. And just a sense of competitiveness. Uh, Cause no, you know, if you're good at, if someone's, if you're good at foosball, you can win a lot. Cause a lot of people think that it's just a fun thing you can do like half ass and uh, Sharon Smith White goes all in and wins every time. Wow, yeah. I love it. Today she has to pick up her dog by 4 p.m. That's her right, dog? that's your plans. Your plans are picking up your dog by four. Yeah, yeah she, woke up, <laughs> she woke up at, at you know 6.45 on the dot and was like, okay, well, I gotta get the dog at four. <laughs> she is the dog has been overnight somewhere? No, but, <laughs> but her son dropped it off. Really? That wasn't on her list. Okay. Um, <laughs> but this is. Perfect. What kind of dog do you got? Um, it's a schnitzel doodle poo. Sharon, Ooh, wow. I tell you all the time, Sharon, <laughs> know your animals. If they know that you don't know. It's it was six thousand dollars. <laughs> we got it in Oregon. Wow. It's a schnitzel wow. doodle poo. <laughs> a the schnitzel only doodle that make poo. It. Schnitzel doodle, oh. you got it up there at the at the Santa Clarita breeders up there. Those guys are so expensive. No, we got it from Oregon. We flew. 
Oh, in Oregon. Oregon. Dome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fancy. Uh, cool. I'm writing down schnitzel doodle poo for future <laughs> reference. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, great. Um, so yeah, we've got two Sharons. I'm sure that won't uh, haunt me <laughs> at all. That nothing. <laughs> that won't be an issue uh, whatsoever. Um, and uh, Troy, tell us about tell us about your character. Uh, so my character, his real name is Denzel Jefferson. Uh, but he, he goes by, he goes by gravel rabbit. He's, uh, it's his, it's his, uh, his go-kart call sign. He's like very into go-karts, you know, like Maverick and goose, but gravel rabbit. And, uh, he just got really into go-karts, you know, he had like a DUI. So it was like the only thing he could drive. And he just was like, he found out he liked them better. And well, so he uh, drives it around to, to get around. He drives his go-kart to get around. <laughs> well, that's illegal too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he just, get away with it. He just yeah, really very. likes them. <laughs> <laughs> he just really likes them. They're like his nice. thing. He's like spends a lot of his free time at the go-kart track. They know him by name. It's like Cheers. Go-kart. Like, go uh, nice. Yeah. He walks in like like Norm on Cheers to the go-kart place. Like, hey, and, gravel uh, rabbit! Gravel yeah. rabbit! Yeah. Tour, buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, that's that's where, that's, uh, that's he has to return a package by 5 p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a defective sex toy, a male sex toy. He's very sex positive. And uh, unfortunately, uh, this thing, it didn't work. So wow. <laughs> he's got to get back. To the store, he's got. He has to. No, he has to. He has it's to like send it back thing. on Amazon. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> so he, it's like he has to like sneak into the thing, and uh, yeah, he has to return it back, and otherwise he'll be very stressed because yeah. he. It's his only way of relieving it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, if you fail to to pull your plans off, you take two stress right away, which seems like a very easy thing. But in every game we play tested. Someone has blown this at least once. So uh, yeah. it's remarkable how having errands to do, even in a fictional setting, kind of hard to <laughs> kind of hard to get them done, as it turns out. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I love can't it. Get this big candle. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Uh, and how old is Sharon Smith White? She'll tell you twenty-eight. Great. That's all I needed to know. And how old is Gravel Rabbit? He's 25. 25. Cool. All right. Great. Um, so just to let you, the players, know how your how your hobbies benefit you, um, uh, Gravel Rabbit, since your hobby is go-karts, you have advantage on all your gut feeling rolls. So anytime you make a gut feeling roll, you're going to have like an extra advantage to succeeding at that. Uh, you also have a spare key for the Burbank El Caminos, which are these like white community El Caminos, and you just happen to have a key for one. Uh, but your real life license is probationary. So if you get pulled over in the game, you lose your license, if not get arrested. So that's sort of what comes with your go-karts hobby. Uh, Sharon Smith-White, you are foosball. Foosball people in Burbank are the dangerous, most dangerous, roughest and toughest uh, you know, you cross the street when you see a, a, some foosball people coming down the street. Uh, you have advantage on all Chicago style roles. So anything involving violence, you're 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 going to have a better chance of pulling it off. Uh, you have a lock pick that your nephew Josh gave you. Uh, and your kind of added challenge is that the police may or may not already be following you. And uh, Sharon Kirk, you are your hobby is karate. You have advantage on all coordination rolls. You have a large karate trophy that intimidates anyone who sees it. But if you get arrested, you'll be kicked out of your dojo. So that's kind of uh, how the hobbies influence the game. And yeah, with that, uh, does anyone have any questions before we start the adventure? I can explain everything else as we play. Okay. Great. Uh, and Christian, you already know these rules, so no questions from Christian. I won't accept them. Anybody else can ask questions. I have no questions. <laughs> Great. So let's get started. This game is called Valley Heat Lifestyle Watch. Uh, you are all members of the Lifestyle Watch. Um, you live in the Rancho Equestrian neighborhood of Burbank, kind of a smaller area in the south of Burbank. And the, the Lifestyle Watch is kind of best described as 
kind of like the neighborhood watch, except more meddlesome and with like less dire consequences. Like whatever is below the neighborhood watch falls under the purview of the lifestyle watch. But you all take it very seriously. It is a it is a it is a serious responsibility for you and it's also kind of like a neutral space. Like out in the world of Burbank, uh, karate people and foosball people, uh, they're like oil and water. They don't get along. Uh, there's a lot of bumped shoulders, a lot of uh, uh, stolen parking spaces. But when you're in the Lifestyle Watch, it's like Switzerland, those beefs don't come into this. So the two Sharons, even though out there in the world, you might, you might kind of butt heads a bit more. Well, she punched me. She punched me in the hip once at the grocery right. store. She, she was in my way. She was, yeah. she was trying to cut in line. I've forgiven you. I know. I I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So there's the logo for used foosball tables where foosball uh, enthusiasts hang out. It's owned by a, a very uh, rough customer named Nick. Um so yeah, if you're looking to get in trouble, go walk into used foosball tables, and that, that's on you. Yeah, I, you've been warned. Um, so yeah, so what's what is occupying all of your time in the lifestyle watch uh, recently is that someone has been tagging your neighborhood. They've been tagging the word skitzy, S K I T Z Y, all throughout your neighborhood in gold paint marker. Uh, they've been tagging garbage cans, recycling bins, uh, lamp posts, post boxes, uh, a few walls. Um, but yeah, it is definitely the current hot item for the Lifestyle Watch. And one last note as we get started, uh, and just like as a general world rule, uh, the cops do not care about the problems of the Lifestyle Watch. They are unconcerned, and should you bring these problems to them, they they won't, you will be wasting their time. So this really kind of falls on your shoulders. Um, but this, yeah, this tag, uh, it has kind of been haunting the neighborhood and you three are kind of the point of the spear on this. So uh, we'll say it is, it's Wednesday. It's about 10 AM and uh, you three live on the same block. So um, if, unless you, uh, feel otherwise you can kind of just kind of meet up like maybe you have a morning coffee on the sidewalk or maybe you just happen to see each other but um yes yeah, we'll say that as we get started here it's it's 10 a.m on a wednesday and uh uh you three can kind of convene here sharon are you gonna walk your dog or where's your dog yeah, no, I'm not going to walk my dog. He's not with me right now. Um, okay, I'm sorry I asked. He's at doggy daycare. Okay. Um, he's learning to be a little more obedient. He's already, he's halfway there, but the other night he snarled. And so he's there for the day. <laughs> what, and just, I'm sorry, what is your dog's name, Sharon Smithwhite? Uh, Paul. Paul. <laughs> Paul McCartney, because you're Beatles. <laughs> no, I like barely know who the Beatles are. I'm only 28. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot your name. I'm sorry, Sharon. I'm so really sorry. Know. Of course, you don't know who Paul McCartney was. He was one of the Beatles. Well, I guess he still is. He's still alive. But who's he named after? Oh, I just always like the name Paul for a dog. <laughs> oh, well, that's a very interesting reason. <laughs> Since I was a little girl, I wanted a dog named Paul. Well, now you have one. Yeah. <laughs> paid six thousand dollars for him sharing uh -huh. and gravel do you have any of this skitty stuff happening on your house because my front lawn they've now i have to hand it to them at least it's gold you know it's kind of like it's this glittery color but it just says skitty across my lawn and it, i even had it mowed and it was it's there's so much paint that, that it's still there does it, did it oh yeah spread out the word or did it just stay did it say staying skitty or did it not, is now your lawn just gold? Well, it's a little gold here and there, but it still says skitzy. It really yeah. soaked deep. They went in there. They, it wasn't just spray painted. They uh, they painted it with, uh, it looks like they took a broom and ducked it in a bucket of gold paint and wrote skitzy. I mean, I can just tell you, uh, I, I obviously, as you both know, uh, I live in my mother's basement. 
and <laughs> she thought it was me. She thought it was me. Gravel, to be honest, a lot of us thought it was you to, in the first I place. Totally understand, uh, but I've left those days behind me. No more spray paint for me. All go karts. Because you were a classy <laughs> spray painter, and it would be just like you to use gold. <laughs> well, yeah, it, but but I, you know, my signature was uh, music notes. No, oh, we remember. Yeah. If you, if you recall, uh, you know, that, we I, were I all wasn't trying to good figure at, out the song for months. You tagged music well, notes. Yeah, I, I was remember what, when you. That was what I could do. I wasn't Keep good <laughs> in school bands. I couldn't actually play the instrument, but I could. I did have a, a, an affinity and appreciation uh, for classical music, and so music theory, I yeah. tagged. Yeah, if you if you recall. Uh, I, it was just uh, the pressure of trying to read music uh, under the gun was uh, too much. So that was how I got it out. But now, <laughs> go cards. Oh, now, baby. when you did that, I always wondered, were those actual songs that you were writing on the roads? Because I remember one that stretched all the way from Magnolia to Alameda. <laughs> that was like a mile of music notes. And I thought, what is this song? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, they, they they were intended to be, they started off as my own compositions. Uh, and then it became quite clear that those were unintelligible. And so I moved on to, I would go get sheet music. Uh, so the one, I believe the one you're referring to was uh, Anchors Away. I, I, I tagged Anchors <laughs> Away. I've always, I've always been a big fan of it. Is that a, uh, is that a Billy Joel song? song. He may have covered it. If he, if 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 you find it, uh, you need to let me know. But I, if but I, find I it, okay, I will. I'll look if you for find it. a Billy Joel, Joel cover, I mean, it almost Billy sounds Joel like cover, neighborhood improvements. Away. Just, I mean, I'll tell, I'll be honest with you, Gravel. I always loved those notes. I thought they were great. <laughs> I thought the city should commission you to decorate every street in the city. I did too, but the yeah. police uh, and uh, Mrs. Winters disagree. So no cards. Yeah, I mean, if you were driving down the street and you could read music, you'd be like, "Hey, hey, this is a song. I know this song. That's you know, mm -hmm. that's just a nice surprise for people." Wow, that's what got me in a couple of almost accidents because I kept trying to read the music and figure out what song it was. I oh my god! How out. many bumper? <laughs> How many wall. fender benders I had trying to figure out what kind of songs those were. I, yeah, we had one into each other. That's right. The, the, none of that was the intent. None of wow. that was the intent. The intent was just to make Burbank a little more Alice in Wonderland. You know, just a little more. Wow. A little more joyous. It could always use a little, <laughs> a little extra touch. Wow. Well, that's amazing. Gravel. It's um, just so weird that this this is a tagging situation, and it was like your past crime. I mean, I feel like you're going to have some insight here. Well, obviously, uh, someone who would write such a vulgar thing as Skitsy uh, is, oh, is a person that I cannot relate to. Okay. Uh, but I would say um, that they do appear to be quite skilled. Oh, yeah. I mean, mine were in 3D on my lawn. It was like a 3D with shading. It was yeah. really, it was really beautiful. They did it on my yes. basketball hoop. They did it in bubble letters. Yeah, oh, I, mine. Yeah, that's incredible. Very, very, <laughs> very even 80. bubble letters. Very impressive. I, I kind of want to keep it, but I don't like the fact that I didn't ask for it. You know that it was done without my permission, probably in the middle of the night. Do you guys know what skitsy means? I I don't know what it means. What if it means uh, schizophrenia? What if it's like short for schizophrenia? Oh, like maybe, you know, like he's almost like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde kind of situation where during the day it's someone normal. And at night uh, they spray paint gold bubble letters. At night I, hate this. I hate this because since I'm a woman, I assumed that Skitsy was schizophrenic, but he was talking about me. And go figure if I was a man, I would assume that, yeah, the tagger is talking about himself. <sighs> well, if he's a man, he's definitely self-centered. I think we can all agree. <laughs> yeah, I see that now. I see it so clearly. It's about himself. I think the sexes are equally flawed, Gravel. <laughs> My late husband was a wonderful man. Uh, That's, was I remember him. Do you remember him? 
He used to sit on the lawn. He smoked one of those old white pipes that looked like an old man with a mustache. Mm -hmm. I do remember. I remember he used to say, hey, stop driving that go-kart. And uh, it was a thing we had. Oh, he, you know, he complained, but he loved it when you zipped by writing those notes on the street. I mean, you got so fast at it. It was like you'd be going 10, 15 miles per hour and you were just writing a song. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it, it took a lot of practice. It was a lot of work, uh, but abandoned. Abandoned now, definitely not Skitsy. Skitsy is probably someone else. Well, I think it's probably a crappy person. Else? Sharon, are you going to do the impression that it's not schizophrenic? I don't know what else it could mean. I didn't even think of schizophrenic. Well, my son t tells me it could possibly be about skits. He wants oh. more skits. You know, this tagger mm. wants to see more more fun things happening. You know, um, let's so see what sees. Skits, skits. So this is they're they're tagging he's, the neighborhood because they it's a request of some kind. Yeah, and so he's starting it. You know, he's saying I'm I'll do some skitsies first, and he wants us to follow up. I don't know if I'm willing to. You know, this is not this is not legal activity what he's doing. So I don't think that this is fun. How long has it been going on? The skitsy uh, thing. Give me a remember roll. And so when you roll in this game, you're going to roll two D6s, just regular with six set of dice. Uh, you're going to add them together. And then if you have any skill modifier, you're going to add that to it too. Wait, okay. can you say that again? So when you roll for your skills in the game, you, you yeah. roll a regular old D6 two times. You add them together. And then if you have... Uh, a number in that skill, you add that in there too. So for example, uh, Sharon Kirk has a two in remember. So uh, Christian will roll two D six twice. He'll add those dice together and then he'll add two to the result and he'll tell me the number. And that will kind of depend on the information th uh, uh, that will decide what information he gets back. What, what did you get there, Christian? I got a, I got a nine, but I have a two, a two uh, remember skill. So I got an 11. So 11, and 11 is a pure success. There's no unwanted consequences with that. Um, so uh, yeah, when you think about it, this has been going on about, uh, you'd reckon about six weeks, but um, with that high of a roll, you'll also remember that uh, it seems to like ebb and flow. Like it was like the neighborhood was hit with the tags and then it seemed like the person stopped uh, for a week and then it resumed you got hit all uh, fresh again and then again it stopped there was like uh, a week of no new tags and then it happened again so it seems uh it seems like it's been ongoing but that it is sporadic when it happens and the other thing i just wanted to um just to clarify i think i said it before but it seems like the tags uh have been done in like gold for the most part in gold paint pen except for the uh, whatever they used on your lawn, Sharon Kirk. The but bucket. the bulk of them are done in like a, a gold paint marker. Gold paint marker. This is a crafts person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is. Hey, but what if we go to uh, the arts and crafts store and just see uh, if there, anyone's been buying a lot of uh, gold pens? I think that's a great idea. Thanks, Gravel. I don't know where to be until four, let's go. <laughs> What, Sharon? I don't have anywhere I have to be until around 3.45. Okay, I'm going to write that down. Sharon's got to be somewhere at 3.45. Well, I have to be there at 4, so I just have until about 3.45. I just want to thank you for being part of this adventure. We're going to fit, We're going to solve this, and it's because of your youthful exuberance. Why, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we Three walking minutes. or are we going to drive? Because, I mean, I can totally walk, but, like. Um, well, let's let's drive. The arts and crafts store is like three and a half miles away. I feel like we won't get oh there until late this afternoon with these <laughs> feet of mine. Yeah, it's definitely because of your feet. Yeah. <laughs> well, Can I have bum a ride from one of you? What did you say, Gravel? I was asking if I could bum a ride from one of you. Oh, well, we're all going to carpool, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be, I'd be happy to drive. 
I got a, uh, let's get into my, and sorry, it's one of those, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's one of those tiny cars. Oh. Right. I always forget I just, what it's called. Right. It's not a smart car. It's even smaller. It's a Toyota Yaris. Oh, Toyota yeah. Yaris. <laughs> so oh, we're gonna all have to get, you guys are going to have to cram into the passenger seat. I'm sorry. There's only two seats in this thing. Okay. Well, Gravel, you can sit on my lap. Hey, you know, don't threaten me with a good time. All I, the seatbelt all doesn't I, go on you. The seatbelt only goes over me. Well, excuse me. The seatbelt's going to go around both of you if I'm driving. As well, a gravel rabbit, I'm also a bit of a daredevil. So, Oh, I'll bet you fun. are. <laughs> let's get in there. Let's let's get down to that arts and crafts store. Burbank Arts and Crafts, uh, it's, a, it's a great place. Oh, we're going to the local one, not just... I thought we'd check out Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I, um, excuse me, but I only support Burbank businesses and I'm not going to support any kind of Target style arts and crafts. I mean, do you know what kind of frames they sell at, at Michael's? I know they fall apart and they're over, they're overly expensive. I'm yes. just, I'm just trying to think like, like a tagger, you know, and I don't know if a tagger believes in local businesses. Oh, that's true. There is, there is something to that. This is a good point. There's let's start. At, let's start. Let, let's start at Ned's place. Let's yeah. start at Ned's and we'll see what he Ned is. Anyway, I mean, it'd be good to see I mean, him. Yeah. See how he's it's doing. Good to see. He's gonna. Yeah, I buy all my candle making stuff there. Oh, that's great. Oh well, I, look. I know it's not that interesting, but I do buy it all there. <laughs> well, I love what? that you support Ned. If I <laughs> if I had some craft that I did that took up my time and was not useful to anyone else, I would probably buy it at Ned's too. Sharon, I read your little messages loud and clear, okay? <laughs> Message received for me. I'll write that down right next to the time you have All to show me to pick up your dog. Maybe you're on holiday. What kind of dog it is. I'm going to write down right here. Sharon doesn't care about candles. You know, let me no, tell you I'm something about saying, candles, Sharon. Maybe on we'll the start. holidays, instead of giving everyone store-bought cookies, maybe we get a homemade candle. Maybe you, maybe you gift one here and there. That's all I'm saying. Maybe I want one. A gift a candle that cost me $150 to make. These things, the materials I'm using wax made from bees. These are, these are, make tinier ones. These are beeswax candles. These, the, what, why these do you think I want it so much, Sharon? You know what? If you we solve this, I'm going to give you a candle. I'm going to give you a candle. If you this. Be it would I benefit would you to share the candles too. I don't want to turn this into an intervention or anything, but your home looks like a shrine. Are we talking about my home? Yeah, the inside of your house it looks like it looks like a shrine. It it's a like shrine to my again? it's a shrine to my late husband Wesley, if that's what you mean. But he it was it's just a lot of candles, is all I'm saying. Maybe you could limit <laughs> that to one room as opposed to uh, he the was entire an house. You can't walk to the you WNBA can't. for six years. Did you know that? <laughs> I did know that. But you can't walk for candles in that house. <laughs> You, you can't walk for candles? What's that mean? There's so many candles. You well, of course, everywhere you step, there's a candle. I'm a candle salesperson. It's a fire hazard is all I'm saying. <laughs> I tell you where you're not going to see a fire break out. That's in my house. There's a fire extinguisher in every room. Yeah, how are you going to find it with all those candles? It's bright red. So what are the candles. I, I just, we always worry about you being a fire hazard. I have my list of things I'd take out my house immediately. If your house started a fire that started the whole block on fire that got to my house, I already have a list because I'm concerned. Can we just get in the Yaris? <laughs> sure. All right, get on my lap, Gravel. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move the clock up a little bit just with the, uh, all that. Uh, all that candle talk. It's about 11 a.m. Well, uh, just so now. you know, there's vanilla candles across my whole dashboard. It's part of the <laughs> decor in the car. They smell delicious. <laughs> so if, you, yeah, if, just, if you get in a rear like collision, body works in here. they're just going to yeah. absolutely. <laughs> it's a lot. I feel, like, I feel like I'm in a foreign taxi cab. <laughs> yeah. Are these melted on your dashboard? Yeah, I mean, it's so hot out. <laughs> I mean, where else have you seen a car with actual real candles melted on the dashboard? I mean, it feels like a, a Spanish Ecuador. here. I saw them in Ecuador. <laughs> you, would you say Ecuador? <laughs> Ecuador. What, what about Ecuador? That is where I saw the candles. 
<laughs> oh, you're selling candles. candles. On, yeah, on a, I was in a cab in Ecuador, and uh, it was very much like your Toyota Yaris. Well, it sounds like a cabbie with some taste. Does it? <laughs> okay. I'm going to drive now. <laughs> I can't stop thinking what it does to the resale value of a Yaris to have candles melted into the front dash. Wow, that's got to be something to clean out. Um, amazing. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, as you're driving there, uh, Gravel Rabbit, give me a snoop roll as you're just kind of taking in the neighborhood. Uh, so again, so you're going to roll... Uh, six-sided dice twice. I don't know if you have physical dice there, if you're going to be using the old Google dice roller. Um, but, Google uh, dice roller. The future. Yeah, go to Google. Okay. Type in dice roller. Um, and uh, either Can way. Can you trust it? <laughs> as far as... Uh, it's certainly better than roll 20, which is the worst uh, <laughs> artificial dice roller I've ever used in my life. Anyway. Um yeah, so roll roll a d6 twice, Scrabble Rabbit, add it together, and then give me your snoop, which I will tell you what it is if you don't have your sheet right in front of you. Um, okay. Uh, you're I going have to Google add dice, one. I have a, I okay, have you're Google got Google dice roller thing, but mm -hmm. what is, what do I? You said the six six. Yeah, it's six. the square. Yeah, it'll be the square. Right. Okay, I have a three and a four. So you rolled a three and a four, so you got a seven. Cool. And you have one in Snoop, so that gives you a total of eight. Um, uh, so, yeah, so you got an eight in your Snoop roll, which is like a mixed success. So as you're driving, uh, as you're driving along, you see a, a bit of gold, um, gold lettering that does not say Skitsy, but you can't see what it says as you drive by it. Okay. Hey, I uh, did you did you guys see did you guys see that? Uh, it, I think he did it again. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't There's, see much with you on my lap, Graf. Well, I saw it glint. I I I'm pretty sure I saw it glint. I can't tell if I you know actually did because of all the lit candles. But sorry. it looked like the glint of the morning light on. Uh, uh, gold gold lettering on that wall over there. I'm sorry. They, the windows fog up because there's a residue that comes off of the flames of these candles and it kind of makes the, the windows kind of blurry. Let me turn this thing around. Are you sure it wasn't Mrs. Dewey? She's always wearing so much jewelry even when it's so hot out. <laughs> I guess it, it could may have been. been. It may have been Mrs. Dewey, but it did look like a wall. I know she does as well, but it, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was an actual wall. Okay, let me turn this thing around. Okay, I have Jared. to go all the way around the block because this thing, this, the turn radius on these is terrible. You'd think this the one the one upside of having a Yaris would be a quick turn, you know, no, you know to do I mean, a Y turn. It's basically a go-kart. Yeah, I mean, it, you'd think it was, but with all the wax it's in the, <laughs> that's in the gears, <laughs> this thing, I mean, it takes all the strength in my shoulders to turn this wheel. <laughs> How slippery is I mean, that wheel? I see yeah. your hands are just sliding. All well, like, oh, I wear these gloves, so it's fine with me. I wear these uh, badminton gloves. I didn't know if you knew that they had gloves for badminton, but they're great for gripping things with wax on them. <laughs> so are you doing the U-turn or not? Well, it can't be a U-turn. It's I have to go around the block. <laughs> so, oh, okay, cool. But I am doing it. Yeah, I'm just uh, – right, yeah. so yeah, I'm not in any rush. I don't have a 25-year-old sitting on my lap. It's – <laughs> Let's just go around the block. I'm so I sorry. Just, the car I, is I'm so sorry. Small. I, all I could afford. The WNBA did not have. They had hardly had any pension for my husband. So this is the best car I could get. And it and it only turns left. Yeah. Well, it turns left slowly. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh man. Uh, cool. So you go around the block and uh, you don't need to roll to see it this time because now you know what you're looking for. You can see it. Uh, there is a, a piece of poster board uh, advertising a yard sale and it's uh, written in gold uh, paint. Marker. Bingo. Mm. I think we should talk to the person having this yard sale and see how long they've had that gold marker and then also see if maybe they have some vintage video games for sale. Just check. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to write that down. Dog, 
Dog, three forty-five. Must be looking for one of those round with tan video chairs video. from my backyard. Maybe she has a couple of those. I'm looking for a uh, classic cool spot. You remember the Seven, seven Up seven Cool up. Spot games? <laughs> I have games. been looking weird. for them for. I've been searching for them my whole life. I had played it once as a child. I've never been able to find it. <laughs> Blockbuster went out of business and it was gone. 7-Eleven had a game called Cool Spot? 7-Up. Seven 7-Up. Up. Seven up. Seven seven up up I always cool confused spot. those two things since I was a kid. 7-Eleven and 7-Up. Right. One is sold at the other generally. But I would just – I as, as, in addition to go-karts, I have a small uh, hobby and infatuation, if you will, with – the corporate branded video games of the early nineties. So if they have cool spot or Chester, the cheetah, uh, any of those games annoyed. Yeah. Annoyed. Yeah. They were all very good games. Uh, in some strange way, they were good and, uh, I need them for my collection. So if we happen to find that, that's also great. Two birds with one stone. Yeah, I'm you're not going to fit it in this Yaris, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, no, you're going to have to walk it, I'll just home. add it to my lap. Okay, look, if we find it and we got we got to unload it immediately, I we can. Don't have, you have zero top. trunk space in this Yaris. I mean, hey, I have strapped uh, over uh, 500 pounds of wax to the top of this car, so <laughs> I can put anything on this thing. <laughs> you think this thing doesn't move? This thing is like a truck. Like a truck in mud. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like just the driver's seat of the truck. I and didn't have to drive. I, I, I offered to drive. <laughs> what kind of car do you have, Sharon? I have a, a Prius. It's a mild upgrade from the Yaris. <laughs> it's it's mint green. It's, it's more of a sage. Oh. I wash it every Tuesday. I, I can't watch this calming color. color. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I thought it would calm me down. It hasn't really worked yet, but um, I'm you know I think over time. We'll okay, so we finally around the block. Sorry it took so long. <laughs> yeah, no worries. You you have the address is thirty one twenty two Stewart, um, so you know where this yard sale is. Just for your reference. Okay, everyone, hold on. I got to make another left. <laughs> 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 I, 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 if I could use my nice. hands, I would try to turn the radio station, change it, but I, you also can't because you got those badminton gloves on. Do you just listen <laughs> I, to the I'll station change, all the time? I'll change the station to yeah, what, what would you what would you like to listen to? Um, you know, some the, the what the kids what I'm listening to, the stuff I like, you know, Lord. <laughs> us okay. twenty eight year olds are into that stuff. Lord? I've never heard of Lord. <laughs> uh, my uh, repertoire is exclusively classical and Ignorant hip hop, but I'm. I where where would I find Lord? What what station would that be? On the the one that the kids like the kids love it. You know, it's like ninety eight seven five. <laughs> ninety eight well, seven five. Okay. <laughs> turning it turning it to ninety eight seven. You probably don't get it in the RS. It's, yeah. it's a, maybe it's a Prius feature. I can yeah, see that. Maybe. This is just all Beatles cassettes in here. Oh, then how I don't even know what a cassette player is. Really, I just have seen it in movies. I have heard tell of it. Yeah, it's it's one of these in this right there. I had to have it uh, installed special. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, while my guitar gently weeps? I feel like that really fits uh, our current vibe. <laughs> I do have that. If you could just flip that glove box open. You might need to do that. There's a screwdriver in the pocket next to that. There's a screwdriver in the door you can use to jimmy that glove box open. (laughs) Every Beatles, they got every Beatles uh, cassette in there. It is open. Uh, I am looking for the Beatles cassette. Uh, It's hard to find amongst all these uh, candles and old parking tickets. Have you paid? Have you paid these? Yes, every time I pay them, I put I put them, I put one in my glove box. <laughs> what okay. I do is I pay them and then I put them back in my car. Just so, just because if I get a, a ticket, 
I can show them. I go, look, uh, look at how many of these I've paid. That's a good. That's a good thought. It's good. That's, yeah. Get the sympathy from from the policeman mm -hmm. for that. Have they ever well, not given you a ticket and you've done that? No, they always give me a ticket. Oh, oh. Mainly, they give me. They I get a lot of tickets for just being too slow in traffic. It's not really parking tickets. It's you know I'll be trying to make a left hand turn on Alameda and I wind up you know you ever have that happen where you can't? Well, I guess you probably don't, but your car it's mine turns so slow that sometimes I go up on the sidewalk. And I'll get stuck on the on the bus stop. Yeah, you're one of those slow drivers that gives me such road rage that that's when I get bloody knuckles that almost get in the way of my perfect risks, my ri perfect risks for foosball tournaments, and that makes me even more mad. And then I start just wanting to bash my head against the side of my <laughs> Prius, which is why it's good that it's constructed so well because I do sometimes bash my head against it when there's slow drivers like you. <laughs> and I think to myself, good thing I'm in my car alone because I would, you know, rip that person's face off you know just take their eyeballs right out of their head sure, i'm driving as fast as i can <laughs> i'm driving this thing as fast as i can the pedal is on the floor it's to the we'll, floor we'll say it's about 11 30 and you uh you arrive at 31 22 stewart um it's just a uh uh kind of just a modest house um uh there is there is currently no yard sale in evidence Suspicious what kind of yard sale is this? It's it seems like the type that might be sort of suspicious. Was All there right, a time on the yard sale sign? Let's get out of the car. It's getting hot in here with these candles. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna blow some of these out. One of these is one of my favorite candles. I didn't even mean to light it. And so it's gonna burn down, and all we've been doing is fighting in this thing. I thought we were gonna have a fun ride. I I lit my cherry candle. For this ride with you guys, it's almost burned out. Well, we didn't ask you to do that, Sheriff. <laughs> oh, that's fair enough. Point. We just asked for, <laughs> I asked for, you know, I'd like a cherry candle of my own, but. You can use that, that screwdriver. If you use that screwdriver, you can open that uh, passenger side door to get out. I'm going to use that <laughs> All screwdriver. Right. Passenger <laughs> side door open. Going to go ahead and climb off uh, Sharon's lap. And. Uh, <laughs> Gravel, I love how you tell me the stuff you're doing as you're doing it. It's just like I like I like to narrate it because I want to make sure you can't. I want to make sure you know what's up since you're caked in the smoke of it's 150 fun. candles inside a car. Yeah, I think as you open the doors, there's probably kind of a generous amount of smoke when you put out a candle. That's when they're they're smokiest. So yeah, there's kind of just it might it might look like you all just like clam bake some cigarettes in there uh before before getting out <laughs> right we're definitely going to look like we're here for the chester cheeto video games <laughs> uh, for sure okay <laughs> but that's so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go knock that's on the door cover. <laughs> um cool you knock on the door yeah uh after a, a moment or two uh, the door opens, uh, and there's a, a heavy set man. Uh, he's kind of balding. He looks like he's probably around fifty. Uh, he's got he's got black hair, um, and and he's, he's sort of frowning. And uh, he kind of opens his door and he takes uh, three of you and he's like, uh, "Yeah, can I help you?" Uh, yes, we're, we're, we're here looking for the yard sale. Sorry, Gravel, you go ahead. I I apologize. We're, we're here for the yard sale. Oh, that was this last weekend. Sorry. Did you see? Did you see one of the signs? I forgot. To, I couldn't remember where I put them up all over town. So I think uh, so, some of them got left up. But that was Ooh, that was this yeah. last weekend. Yeah, they sure did, and we went all the way around the block just to come check out the yard sale. Uh, so no so yard. Uh, you're like you, yeah, you're like the tenth people to do it. I where did you see the sign? I'll maybe this afternoon I can go take it down. It, it was around the corner on. Uh, on Palmdale. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This afternoon I'll I'll go grab that one. I'm sorry. Hey, do you go do you know anyone named Skitsy? Name what? Let's play play a little cooler, sure. I mean uh, uh sir, did you make the signs yourself? Yeah. Okay. Uh that's really catchy. I like that you <laughs> 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 really, really catchy uh, marker you used. You know, we would we would have driven right past, but that gold really caught our eye. Uh, do you still have one of those that we can 
uh, I can, can I have a pen at least for us going out of our way to come all the way up this yard sale? <laughs> <laughs> weird, weird ask. I love it. So you, uh, Sharon Smith, like, give me a businessy role, which okay, is like convincing sure. someone of something, especially sure. something crazy, like give me the paint pen you made your yard signs with. <laughs> So you roll a d6 twice, and you're gonna add your businessy to it. And yeah, I'll, I got a, uh, I got a ten. Ten all together. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah, that's an uh, that's an outright success. Uh, yeah, he kind of uh, he kind of looks at you a minute as if he's gonna like contest this kind of idea, and then uh, uh, he's like, "Yeah, all right, I guess I I don't need it anymore." If that's if that's what you want, hang on. I'll, I'll go. I'll go grab it. Uh, yes, and after a moment, he comes that. back and he's like looking at it, and uh, he's like, "This is this is a pretty good pay mark. I found these uh, up at Burbank Arts and Crafts. I uh, I hadn't seen these before, but you're right. They've uh, it's got a nice it's got a nice uh, shimmer to it. Uh, and yeah, because we're tagging, be good for tagging things. What don't you think? If you wanted to like tag the neighborhood with it. Uh, he kind of looks at you kind of oddly. He's like, I, I, I don't know. I guess, I guess so. I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't? No, tag the neighbor? No. Well, just so you know, someone's been writing skitsy everywhere with gold markers. So you're the number one suspect right now, guy. <laughs> uh, he, he definitely like bristles at this and he kind of like leans on, uh, on his door jam. He's like, what? I'm, I'm the chief suspect. Yes, you know, because, you know what I've been using it for. I, I had a yard sale this last weekend. Yeah, we're and we don't that's what I used it for. You saw the you saw the sign. I mean, it'd be a good cover. You know, you want to go around tagging stuff, and then you want to cover your tracks. You go, oh no, you know what I'm doing? I'm having a garage sale that doesn't even exist. I had a garage. I cleaned out my garage. There's, there's nothing even in there. How would I had we a line of cars down the block. How would we know that you had a garage sale? Go show us one one item of proof that you had a garage sale a week ago. All right, I, I had some clubs that I couldn't sell. Come check it out. And he comes out and uh, puts in the code to his garage and it opens up and it is indeed a pretty organized garage. Uh, and he kind of like pulls out some clubs and, and shows them to you. And he's like, nobody would take these. And they're old and they're pieces of shit. Take a look. Well, These are my new clubs. And he has a... Uh, he has like a bag of like uh, nice, much more recent clubs. I kind of want to take one of your old clubs and bash like, everything in this garage to pieces because uh, she'll do it. She'll do it. She punched me in the hip once. Because we came all the way here for this yard sale, or at least to find out who's been tagging the neighborhood. And right now, it's looking like we're gonna have to get back in that goddamn car. You know what it's like to drive a Yaris with three people in it that's filled with candles in the middle of summer. <laughs> uh, Sharon Very Smith White, give me a, a unless you're not doing this, give me a Chicago style role for the implied violence that you're suggesting. Oh, if you're oh, trying yeah. to intimidate him, uh, that which is what it sounds like to me. If if you're not, then you don't have to do it. Yeah, man. Yeah, I am. Ooh. So when you have an advantage on a roll like you do Ooh. right now, you take the lower of the two. And oh. you re-roll it. Um, you don't re-roll the whole thing. You just take the lower of the two dice and re-roll it and take whatever the better result is. Wait. So Okay, so I rolled a five and then a four. And so I take- Cool, I so take that four and re-roll it and see if you can get something better than a four. I got a three. So the four is, uh, so yeah, so you have a nine Plus before three. your modifier. So yeah, wow, 12. It, yeah, it's just like the temperature in this garage chills as if you're in a walk-in cooler. <laughs> I mean, this is especially it's... true if it's before my, my lunch smoothie. I am, I, my temper, my inner temperature gets hot, real hot real fast. Yeah. The way, the way you're even handling these clubs, like you can do that, like rotate thing where, you know, you're just kind of like, Oh, is this like a nunchucks or a golf club? We can't, it's hard. It's almost hard to tell, uh, with this thing. And, uh, this guy kind of takes a step back. He's like, "Hey, hey, hey! I'm not, I'm not looking for trouble. I'm telling you, I, I I'm not tagging the neighbor. I, for fuck's sake, I'm 51 years old. I, I had a, I had a yard sale. I mean, I gave, I, I gave you the marker. 
He did. He did give he me did. that marker. I do. He did. Yeah, I yeah. did just ask, and he gave me that marker, which I do appreciate because I do kind of like uh, that gold shimmer. And I have to compliment you on a very organized garage. And I just don't think someone that has a garage that's this organized would would go around tagging. So I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, we're all uh, sorry. What do, What do you think? Say, have you seen these skitsy? Uh, Tags though, what do you think Skitsy, in your impression, what does Skitsy mean to you? Uh, let me roll and see if he's seen him just for fun. Let's see if uh, old Gideon here has uh, or his memory is. It's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I I may have seen another you mentioned. I don't know. I just thought it was another stupid tag that you see like everywhere. I don't think I don't think it means anything. It's just it's just something stupid, you know. Well, we agree that it's probably something stupid, sir. Yeah. But it's also something very yeah. ugly. It's, it's marring up this neighborhood. I yeah. Hey, I hey, I agree. I'm I'm on I'm a Hills. I'm on Yell's team here. I hope you I hope you do find the piece of shit who's doing this and set him straight. Sir, you said shit twice now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Do what? you have a, I, do you have a Mormons or what? Sorry. Do you what, have a what was swear that? jar? Do you have a swear <laughs> jar you can put? Put some change in for us. Or did you sell that with, no, your, I, with your yard sale? Sharon's Sharon's pretty serious about the uh, swearing, as you can see from her face. No, I I live that alone. What I do? The other take, one. take the money out myself. No, I cuss all the time. Yeah, my okay. late husband would punch a hole in the wall every time I used any kind of swear word. <laughs> Jesus Christ! My house is filled with holes in the wall. <laughs> And, and it wasn't until around 1994 that I finally, you know, broke the habit. So every time oh. someone swears, I just it brings back it brings back a lot. All right. Well, hey, he's a good I, I apologize. He's an assistant right. coach for the WNBA. Have you ever heard of the Razors? No one's no, I don't, I don't no watch one, no the WNBA. I don't. I don't even know no if that's the name of the team. I know that he was. I never went to any of the games, but I know he was so proud. And I think it was the Razors. God, I it was the Razors or the <laughs> Raisins or. <laughs> he was a you great know, man. He was a great man. Yeah, well, he was just cursed with a bad passion. I, I, you know, name one WNBA star. I know there was someone named Tina that was the center. Uh, this guy's just kind of looking at <laughs> all you, just kind of like sadly shaking, shaking his head after you've kind of shared all this with, with him. He's like, "Well, look, all I can tell you is I got these at, at Burbank Arts and Crafts. All right, it was it was a it was a pain in the ass to get them. They keep them like locked up at the back of the store. Ooh, they keep them locked you, up. Huh? You think you think I was buying buying a handgun or something? Hmm. Okay. Uh, one last question before we go: Do you have cool spot for the Sega Genesis? <laughs> <laughs> you better have it. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of thinking. He's like, I don't know. There was like a a cardboard box full of <laughs> full of some of my kids' games that uh that maybe had, I don't. I don't know. I can go. I can go look. Cool spot that that soda pop game. You've heard of it? Correct. Right. Let me go. Let me go look. If you don't mind. If you don't mind waiting, I can go look. I mean, I don't mind waiting. I don't have anywhere to be until five. All right. Uh, he kind of goes in for like a, a pretty lo so long that you're like, maybe he's not coming back out. Maybe, maybe he's telling he, like, the police the cops or something. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, and after a long time, he comes out. <laughs> Uh, and he has in his hand the Sega Genesis copy of Cool Spot, and he's like, oh my "God, yes, yeah, this, uh, this is my son. This is my son's game. This was uh, in 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 the box, and nobody nobody wanted to buy. It. I'll tell you what, you know, I, I I can tell that you've all you've all had yourselves a, a day. You can you can just have it. I was asking, uh, it was in like a, a five dollar box. You can just have it. You're sure that he's okay with you selling this? Because when my son was in high school, I accidentally sold all of his Star Wars stuff, and he's still mad. Yeah, he, moved up to, he doesn't even talk to me. He lives up in Seattle. <laughs> he's not even going to know that I've that I've sold it. Oh, Seattle. Yeah, he moved. He moved up to Seattle as soon as he was nineteen. What's he do up there? I've seen him. I've seen him twice. He, oh, it sounds like no a very good relationship. Yeah, I guess not. Love them while they're here. 
I just want you to know that you gotta love them while they're here. <laughs> yeah, you got you got kids of your own. I have one son who lives in uh, Arizona. Hmm. Somewhere yeah, in Arizona, you know. he won't tell me. He won't tell me. For a while, I thought it was Tucson. I went down there looking for him, and he's not down there. I know that it's a desert background on his Facebook page, <laughs> so it's uh, not a city. It's a very rural area. It's very. It's a very rural area in Arizona. I don't know if you're familiar <laughs> with it. If, like, you tell me what you think. If you were looking for someone that was in your family and their Facebook picture had saguaros. What part of Arizona would you think that would be? I don't know. I don't. I don't really know Arizona at all. I don't know. Well, you know what I want to say Scott to you. Scottsdale. I don't know. I think you are the most indulgent person I've ever met. I mean, you have been so kind <laughs> to even, even, even. He's like, look, I don't want to. He kind of gestures <laughs> to the other Sharon and the golf clubs. He's like, look, I don't. I just don't want. I don't want any trouble. All right, I can see. I can see you all are. I've cooled you know, down a little bit. Hot, hot on this, hot on this case, but <laughs> I wish I had more information for you. And good luck, good luck finding your kid. I just want, just one more. Are we sure that your son isn't living somewhere in your attic or your garage, and he used this pen to, to tag? I just got to ask that you're not positive. He's he's still around. It's possible. It's possible. For a long time, my son was living in my garage, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> He would sleep, he would sneak in and sleep there. His yeah, whole well, college here. From there. Everyone knew but you. It, it was like you're yep. so blind to it, you didn't want to see it. I found I out later. I'd hear yeah, it. And I have a I have a security system. Yeah, there's no way. No, my, my kid, what I'd ask. If my son came back, this would be the last place he'd live. He'd probably rather live under a bridge and live here. Well, your son and my son have a lot in common. <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds that it sounds that way. I'm Sharon, by the way. Sharon Kirk. Oh. I think I'm Gideon, Gideon, uh, Gideon. Uh, Gideon Hart. Yeah. Gideon Hart. What are you, a private detective? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, with a name like that, I wish you had a business card. <laughs> uh, he's like, I don't, I don't have one on me, but I, uh, I work for Remax. So uh, yeah, you're looking to. Oh, a real uh, estate. Find your new home. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Real estate's a good business around a here. Real, a real job, yeah. It could be an, an upgrade for you, Cher. Sharon, I'm talking to him right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just witnessing, just witnessing uh, a better future for you possibly happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me give you my card. Oh, yeah, they thanks, call me, thanks. They call me the Candle Master. I'm having an overnight sleepover candle sale party at my house on Saturday night, come by. We've got vanilla candles. We've got vanilla saffron candles, vanilla cinnamon. It's the theme is vanilla. It's yeah, a vanilla I, Saturday night. Hey, you didn't tell us about a overnight sleepover <laughs> candle party. Well, I didn't want to be rude. It, it's a $250 entry fee. Yeah, that's the thing, Gideon. She'll never give away a candle. No matter how close you get to her. I bet you'll never even get one. Give it to you. $250 candle? Getting kind of... Buts $250? They're made from a beeswax, uh, from a special hive of bees up in Santa Clarita. It's a, it's a, just a very special breed of bee. That's all I know about it. I just know that it's very expensive wax. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Wow, they call yeah, them, they call them you see, you it's a vicious car. bee. They call them hornet bees. These, these Santa Clarita hornet bees, they're about the size of your thumb. And a lot of people thought they were birds for a while. But they're, they're bees. They make a lot of wax. And they make candles out of this stuff. But there's only like 200 of these bees every year. And there's this guy, Reginald, that raises these bees up in Santa Clarita. And uh, he sells me the wax. The only other person that uses this wax is Gwyneth Paltrow. I mean, that's, wow. what, he told, that's what he told me. <laughs> that would explain the smell of your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, getting is stunned, it's done by all. It's like that's that's crazy. I've never even heard of a two hundred fifty dollar candle, but 
Anyway, I got to get back to the back to the office. I wish I'll, I'll hang on to your card. You know, if I, uh, you know, if I think of anything, or I, you know, I can get any ideas about about those those cactuses, I'll I'll give you a call. It's a prickly pear and a larger saguaro. And one of the pictures has a cactus wren in the background. I'm thinking it could be uh, Scottsdale. Maybe uh, that's the only that's the only other town I know in Arizona. <laughs> Scottsdale, Tucson, and then there's uh, Yuma. It could be Yuma. That's in Arizona, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Could also be a stock photo. You know, sometimes people find cool photos on the it, it on the internet of where they want to live. The stock photo. Yeah. I never even thought of that. It could be a green screen. He could live in downtown Phoenix. He just he wishes. He's still living in my garage. In the desert. He could be. <laughs> you know, he could he be, be green screening your... himself in my garage, green screening Facebook pictures of himself in a desert when he's still sleeping behind the Yaris. Yeah. And you know what? He could have a plan to steal your Yaris because you steal your Yaris. It's about what? $4,000, $2,500 for the car. <laughs> But how much how much value of that wax inside? Probably over five k. Oh, easily. Wax. I mean, the resale value of this car to a wax enthusiast. I mean, so <laughs> I would start putting out some security cameras in your system because you do have all that that, and the wax is already portable in sort of in mm -hmm. your Yaris. You could make a so, hundred more candles just with my car. I, I know. You gotta watch out. Sure, sure, we've taken up enough of your time. We've yeah, got to run. I'm, I'm sorry, it's closing the garage garage door. <laughs> okay, we'll just step out the garage door. Thank you, and oh, again, really and I, I almost I almost swung your head off. It was really just you know, it's just me low, low blood sugar. Uh, really needed to work it out on the tables, you know. And we'll, I'll do that later tonight. So sorry thanks about for that. Uh, the cool spot game. Very, okay. I'm, I'm very glad happy. it's here. Uh, I'm glad can't it's tell going you how to a good home. It's been so hard to find this. I tried Amazon. I tried eBay. You know, I went to the last Blockbuster. I tried everywhere. Thanks. Oh, up in Oregon. Providence, Providence mm -hmm. I guess. He's like up talking as the garage door is going down. Yeah, well, I'm glad. Yeah, I went, I'm glad it worked I went out. all the way up. I went all the way up <laughs> I, to Oregon. That's where Sharon's dog is from. Could have, we could have carpooled up to Oregon, you know, <laughs> looked for your game, gotten, gotten Paul. Well, next time. Man. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get another Paul. Okay, let's get to that arts and crafts store. Do you guys mind if I... Uh, oh, well, actually, I guess I'm picking up some vanilla candles. I think they're... Uh, I got to look at my notebook to see where they are. <laughs> it's about it's about 12.30, I'd say, after uh, your, uh, your okay. conversation with Gideon. I have to stop by my personal mailbox to pick up a pallet of candles. Oh, come on. Uh, sure. And we're playing a one shot, so it doesn't actually matter. But normally, uh, you can, uh, uh, you'd write Gideon's name under your neighbors and you'd color in like an up arrow for having like a positive interaction with them. Uh, okay. This being a one shot that we're just uh, running in two hours, the odds of you running into Gideon again are pretty low. But so we Except don't have to share. I don't know. Yeah. For sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> if we get to that sleepover scene and he shows up rom com style, yeah. the game will have gone on too long and <laughs> I will be in big trouble. So that will not be <laughs> happening. Uh, <laughs> Better strike while the candle's hot. <laughs> yeah. Gideon, Gideon Hart comes to my candle party. I'll tell you something. It's going to be a second marriage. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, oh, so you're going to stop on the way, Sharon, and uh, pick up your candles? Yes. Great. Yes, yeah, I got to get a pallet of candles. Great. And those will be... And, and where are those going to go? <laughs> well, those, I'm going to strap those to the roof. They strap right okay. on the roof. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really some ratchet, ratchet, ratchet a lot straps. Of Great. It's really heavy. They come, they come packed in ice because uh, it's summer, so they want to preserve them. So it's a big... Freezer box full of candles. Could you guys help me get it on the roof? And why are we why why are we taking these to the craft store? Well, we're not. I got. I had to pick them up because I got oh. a party this weekend. Oh right, right. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Why don't you all do this just for fun? Why don't you all give me a coordination roll? 
Yeah. <laughs> this is the three of you trying to get a pallet of candles up on top of this Yaris. I got six. Cordial I got six. six. I got a 13. Okay, I'll tell you something. No one can move candle wax like me. I mean, <laughs> yes, seven. you've done it before, Ooh, I seven. guess. Cool. Uh, so a six is a failure and a seven is a mixed success. A 13 is a, is a crit. So it, it doesn't go, it doesn't go great, but you don't lose the palette. Uh, but maybe, uh, as you're, as you're kind of getting it in, uh, uh, Sharon Kirk, you've done this a hundred times. So for you, you know, you, you know how it works. Um, so as, uh, the other Sharon drops her side, you're kind of able to, to minimize the damage and, um, a few candles kind of tumble out and oh, break my God, on that's the asphalt. $500. Um, uh, <laughs> but, uh, sure uh, I couldn't, I couldn't risk them are, But the bulk of them are, are up there. Go? I have 12 Beverly Hills candle lovers coming to this party on Saturday night. And those that's $500 worth of candles. There hasn't been one of these parties that I didn't sell every single one. I couldn't you don't seem very impressed by that, but that's okay. Well, I couldn't risk my risk for important. your sales of your candles to some Beverly Hills hoes. You know, if my husband was here, he'd punch a hole in the wall. Well, <laughs> I, that was considered a swear like word in our house. <laughs> what what were the uh, what were the other swear words? What were other what were other words that that set him off? Yeah, same. Well, it was interesting because at first they were pretty, they were pretty, you know, I, I had a, I was like a sailor mouth, but then later I couldn't even say stuff like pucky, you know, I couldn't even use pucky. replacement words. So really his complaint wasn't about the, uh, the offensiveness of the word, but the offensiveness of the sentiment. So really what made him punch walls was my anger. So he would punch a wall whenever he thought I was angry. I've been in therapy about it for a long time. That's very meta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it is meta. What do you think he'd think of the word skitsy? I don't know what he'd think of the word skitsy. I guess he'd probably he'd probably assume it was a swear word. And punch a hole in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. I miss him. I liked him too. <laughs> I really, I love. I didn't the guy. then, but now that I know this, I. I swear the team was the Razors, or the Blue Razors. The Venus Razors. Venus no, Razors. No, I, I know what that is. That's a that's for leg. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that maybe the WNBA player, the WNBA team, could be called Venus Razors. That would make sense. You're right. They could be product placement. Probably, you know, that's probably a big part <laughs> yeah, of it. They, they need the, money to yeah, come from the somewhere. There's not getting any more to get done. As we get back in this car, the um, the suspension is going to be completely spent because of these <laughs> candles. So it's going to be a really bumpy ride. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about it's about one it's about one p.m. I mean, we're there's going to be some bottoming out. So if you see any sparks, I don't want you to worry. <laughs> is it? Are you all worried about a spark? And all these candles. I mean, it hasn't been a problem so far. <laughs> I mean, I'm not worried about any sparks, as you well know. Go karts are known for sparks. You're a man uh, of so I'm gonna be. I'm going to be right at home. Oh, going to feel real good. You know, after you this, you don't want you, me to drive. You would. You, would you? I would love I'll it. Happily, would like? I'll happily drive. All right. Uh, just oh, and then let me Sharon's going to get on my lap. I yeah. mean, I don't have to get on your lap. I can ride up with the wax if you want. People, you, you can you can sit up there. This thing doesn't move very fast. It's like riding in the back of a pickup truck. But but you're on top of yard. the RS on top of very expensive hot wax candles. Yeah, won't you melt the ice that keeps the candles from melting? I mean, I'll I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll say it's about one third. Sharon, you sit on my lap while while gravel drives. 
<laughs> okay, but get ready because you're going to get a go kart driver's. <laughs> I drive like that. I drive like a go. I can't help it. I always drive like I'm driving a go kart. <laughs> so we're going to get there about as fast as this car can go. Which is about 15 miles per hour with his wax <laughs> on top. But if you can get it going any faster than that, it's going to be impressive. Yeah. I'm excited. It's mean, pretty fast for a go kart. I'm excited. <laughs> Well, I'm just glad that you're on the bottom, Sharon, because if there's no shocks system, uh, my, well, my bony like bottom I'm wouldn't handle shock. it. Yeah, it's like I'm your suspension system here. Yeah, it's much, actually right. much more comfortable this way. Well, let's get to it. <laughs> cool. I do feel like uh, yeah. I'm in like a Papazon chair, actually, sitting on your lap, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> my lap Wicker is like a Papazon chair. Wicker-like bones. Like a heated Papazon <laughs> chair. <laughs> my lap is like a papa son yeah oh god like if i was a, if there was like a water a waterbed papa son you know like a water oh my god what a wonderful piece of furniture that would be a waterbed papa son yeah that's what you I feel like that doesn't exist. <laughs> Uh, cool. You get the. Uh, you you get just take that bank. screwdriver, gravel. Take that screwdriver and jam it into the the ignition, and that'll start the car. Right. Okay. <laughs> How many screwdrivers do you have in this car? Six, seven, seven eight. There's two eight, for eight. the. There's two for the glove box, and then you need to use uh, Phillips heads for the doors. But <laughs> this little tiny little. This is see the one he's using to start the car. It's the, I used to use it to fix Wesley's glasses. I don't know why yeah. I took off my glasses. Did, this did, he, did, he used to, did he used to break break his glasses as well? Uh, I, I guess they flew off a couple times. Oh, he, he was, was a yeah. big guy, you know. I remember. Yeah. Very oh, imposing. you remember him? I do remember him. I told well, you. That's he used right. to yell at me. You drove he used by. to yell at me while I was driving uh, driving by. He would chuck. Uh, he would chuck the bottom of his his classic Coors Light at me. Uh, it was really. Uh, it, it's one of my cherished childhood memories. Yeah. And so he threw a lot of those Coors Lights. That was like it was like he was playing baseball out there on the weekends. Yeah. Um. It, you know. Yeah. He, he would. He got pitcher. close a few times. Well, he was a pitcher in high school. That's great. That's he was really a great. softball pitcher. He would throw those cores underhand. Underhand. Yeah, he almost killed somebody once. He didn't mean to. He was just uh, throwing a beer to him in college and uh, hit him right between the eyes. You know, the guy ended up in the ER. It was a, it's a long story, but uh, he was uh, arrested for a while. He spent some time in jail, but they determined in the trial that it was an accident. So it was involuntary uh Reckless endangerment, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it was before that I makes knew. me like him even more. Man, yeah. what a great guy! Miss that guy. Softball Hard. player, softball player, pipe smoker, uh, assistant coach for the WNBA. Yeah, sounds it's like a real streak of violence. I like it. it. All. Just <laughs> a man with yeah. a lot of different skills. Serial abuser, really the whole the whole pocket knife. Yeah, yeah. He was, I, was, uh, I used to walk by and I'd see him, you know, when I was going on my speed walks and doing the wrist pumps and um, my foosball, like, you know, I don't know, five years ago when I was about 28, I'd walk by and uh, he'd always just talk about the weather. I didn't mm, know he was this interesting guy who would punch holes in the walls if I'd known. Yeah. Man. That sounds well, like, he, always yeah. For the last three years of our life, we, he and I didn't even speak. We lived in the same house. But it was just, it got to a certain point. I was sleeping on the couch. And, you know, you never you ever notice you, you're, you're sleeping on the couch and then you realize, oh, I've been doing this for two and a half, three years. And uh, it, it's a, I think about it now. I think, boy, I wasted, I mean, how many days is three years? 365 times three. That's, you know, and we didn't even talk about why we weren't talking. But Well, it, it sounds, I mean, you couldn't. Because when you talked, he punched holes in the walls, right? I mean, that, that didn't help. Why? It didn't help. Oh. And also, we had a disagreement about where our son had moved. And uh, we spent about a year driving around looking for him. Well, that sounds nice, a road trip together. Was it in the Yara? Because yeah, so? that might have been. But there, not one word between us the whole time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this 
is making me almost nauseously sad, Sharon. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! I've for three years, huh? <laughs> no, I. You know, I'd leave notes about grocery shopping. That was pretty much it. <laughs> Jesus <Yeah>. Christ! <laughs> he didn't love the hobbies I had it, before. It was before candles. It was I used to make these little guys out of. You know, you can make little miniature figurines out of bread. Did you know that? If you soak bread in water, you can. It's almost like clay, and they dry out. And I called them bread men, and I tried selling them for a while. Uh, we had a lot of disagreements about that because Did they would you get sell a single one. <laughs> What's that? Did you sell one? I, I, I'm wondering if any, why any single person would ever buy one of those. I never sold one, but I did uh, enter one in a 4-H contest at a state <laughs> fair. Uh, it was a it was an organic foods <laughs> organic foods <laughs> figurine. <laughs> it was an organic foods figurine contest. It was a really niche thing they did in the '90s, and uh, it was a it was a map of Arizona, and it had little little men that were oh he's a miner and then like a guy who did other stuff they did in arizona in the 1800s were you using were you oh. using special special bread like you do with the wax like what were the they best, very yeah, the best bread the best bread was a generic bread from uh john's grocery store i don't know if you know vaughn's john's is the it's like sure. the more of the yeah, but there, was also, there was an, also there was a Gelson's wheat that was really good, but you know they those things only had three or four months in them before they started to mold. But that was kind of what was fun about the fair was that all the figurines were made out of food. Sure and seems like they shouldn't have been qualified qualified given that it was like an organic uh, entry. That's a really good point. It, this was at a time when organic had a different meaning. It really just meant food. <laughs> You know, I think it's because I'm sitting in your warm papa's on lap and everything you're saying is just going hot directly into my ear. The way my I'm lap feeling... heats up, it's like a hearth. <laughs> you're telling me. Uh, well, it's about two o'clock. Completely... <laughs> it's two o'clock and you are, uh, yeah, you're just outside of Burbank Arts and Crafts having, having this... Uh, this conversation. Oh, I, I'm sorry I'm for all you guys are sharing. Sharon, Sharon, do you still have that marker? You still have that gold marker? Oh yes, yeah, it's in my. Purse. Maybe we should. Maybe we should have a game plan before we go in. Do we show them the marker immediately, or do we do we ask around a little bit and then like reveal it? You know, like an aha. I mean, maybe we should go in there and ask if he has any of these gold markers. If he says no, we say, are there some in the back? Yeah. I like the way you think. I uh, like the way you think, too. If, I, I, or, or, or should we come out strong showing that, you know, we have proof that someone bought this here? I think we should see what they say. Since he said they're locked up, I think we should just go in, you know, maybe whistle around. <laughs> and then, you know, I say, oh, oh. Do you have any gold markers? And then yeah. see what they say. See if they <laughs> yeah. point us towards these or if they point us towards some other ones. And if know? he starts lying to us, I'm going to take his hand behind his back. I'm going to hold it there. I'm going to punch him up against the wall. And we're going to get some answers. Sharon, Sharon you're going to break that guy's arms with those wrists of yours. If you he, it, only if he lies to us. Only if he lies to us. Why don't you bring the golf club? Huh? That's a great idea. I don't want to be too intimidating off the bat, but it could be like I'm in there to get some sort of uh, ribbons to put around the the golf cart. Right. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a craft store. You could very it. maybe you want to bedazzle your golf club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's an old golf club. Maybe you want to jazz it up. Yeah, I'm right. I'm, I'm bringing it in. Remember that this is Ned, and he's 65 years old, and he owns an arts and craft store. So let's not get too rough. Is he keeping gold markers locked in a back room, Cher? That's there's a good something, question. There's something that's going on with Ned, and I, I'm not going to just talk it out, you know, if he's not giving us the right answers. All right. Okay. That's fair enough. Let's give him. I only have an hour and 45 minutes. Before we get done here. Your, okay. Before I got to get dropped off. 
Okay. Yeah, as you will know, at that uh, dog obedience place, every five yeah. minutes you're late, they charge you another ten bucks. I, I'm not paying extra money because you had to put candles on your hood. So. <laughs> 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 Well, so, well, okay. Well, we're going to get you there on time. I don't know if you remember, but I wrote down the time because I, I, that. because I care about you. But I don't remember you taking note that I needed to pick those candles up. Well, I, I, frankly, I didn't care and didn't know that you did. But after this Do you, long do you even ride, remember the name of my, hu my late husband? Yeah. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I know I like him. I know we almost killed a guy with a Coors Light. I love that. I love that was an accident. Him. His name was Wesley, and Wesley. he was an assistant coach for the WNBA. Oh, I know that. The Venus Razors, yeah. Well, shall we go in? Yeah. <laughs> I got my club. I, I think we should. I am melting in here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cool. You go in. Yeah, it's nice and air conditioned. It smells like uh, like potpourri and and craft foam, and uh, it just smells like every craft store you've been in. Uh, it smells like home. It smells like what? It smells like home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it also smells uh, like the Gap Scent Ohm. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, don't let me leave here without getting some model glue for my golf cart. Okay, I'm writing that down. Bottle uh, please, please put it in there. Just while I'm thinking about it. The and uh, Ned Gates, who's uh, he's he is about 65. He's got a shock of uh, red, uh, red hair streaked with gray. Uh, he kind of like toddles out uh, from some of the uh, the aisles, and uh, he's like, "Oh, help, help you folks! Oh, Sharon, you coming, coming for some candle fixings? Yeah." I gotta get some wicks. You gotta get some of those, some of those uh, horsehair wicks. I mean, it's oh, not really yeah. horsehair. They just call them horsehair wicks. Good, the good stuff. Mm. Yeah. Well, glad to see you're still in the business. Folks don't don't want to make candles anymore. They're just lazy. They just want to go go down to the Galleria and go to Yankee Candle and take the the easy route. But I'm I still got that that candle you gave me. Ned, you are you you're so you're oh, you my song. I'm sorry, Ned. She gave you a candle. Yeah. Oh, you gave yeah. him a candle. That you didn't pay that, for it. That's that's right. No, no, we I yeah I I gave her a bit of a, a cost cost deal on some of the some of the uh, supplies and okay. it was a coupon type situation where I gave him a candle. And okay, I'm not. I'm not messing with you know what you're doing with your dealer. That's, I, that's all fair. I was about. I don't know if I'd call him a dealer, but he is a a, a wax <clears throat> dealer. I feel like you're implying he's a some kind of a drug dealer. No, no. it's just you no, treat no, your no. candles like contraband. Yeah. No, they do seem like your drug. Well, if you think I, I don't get high on vanilla, you'd be mistaken because I do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if 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 Joy is a form of getting high, then you're right. I'm an addict. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing too hard, and I brought myself in an accident. Sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, he uh, Ned assumes you know where the the, the wicks are, uh, but he'll to. Uh, uh, grab I also, I, I, I'm wondering if you have, I just want see this old golf club. It's old and it needs to be snazzed up a little bit. Uh, kind of want to make it uh, skitsy. I don't know. Um, I'm wondering if you have a, like a gold marker I could use to kind of make it look a little fancier and more my style. Oh, you know I mean? Yeah, sure. We keep they're uh, locked up in the back here. If you want to come with me, so you're doing like kind of like a, a flea market flip. You're just uh, gonna give it the old razzle, razzle dazzle. See if you can maybe turn That's it around, right. make a little money, or, or just keep it right. uh, by my front door if I need it. But why do you why are you keeping these uh, markers locked up in the back, Ned? Oh, and he's kind of like walking and talking, and then he shows you he's got kind of a, a locked cabinet back here, and it has. Uh, spray paint 
and uh, glue anything that could be inhaled <laughs> by anyone. Uh, and and the paint markers uh, are in there as he's like unlocking it. He's like, oh, I I keep it in here so I can I can control who, who buys it. You know, I don't want I don't want kids buying buying this stuff and and marking up the neighborhood. I don't want I don't want people buying this and you know breathing it in and out of a out of a bag. Safety did, first. Did you did you always keep them locked up? Yeah, ever since I mean hell, ever since I can remember. Wasn't such a such an issue when I first opened up back uh what was it uh 1998, but generally they've been they've been locked up. Why would you think mm -hmm. that people would be using these gold craft markers to to vandalize? Oh, they'll, seem like they'll use anything. Markers. They'll use anything except the Crayola washables. That's the only thing I can keep out there on the floor. Has anybody been? Yeah, has anyone purchased a, a, an exorbitant number of these pens? Hmm. Well, I don't know what you'd call exorbitant, folks. Have not been buying too many of them. Like, I mean, there was there was a fellow came in. I reckon he probably bought ten. I get. I suppose it struck me as odd. That's a lot of gold pens, Ned. I mean, I don't know it, what Unless kind of. Unless someone is has a do. a wedding with four hundred people, they need place settings for. It. If that was the case, was that the case? Do you think? No, I think. Uh, then. If I reckon it was it was for his uh, uh, son's high school project, I think. Did he say what his son's high school project was? Well, was it vandalizing? I didn't. I didn't. I had him pry. <laughs> who who was this that bought them? These ten markers. Well, I, that's. I don't normally divulge uh, my cus customers' Nick, information. I buy thousands of dollars worth of wax from you every month. <laughs> uh, you me, and tell me you don't owe me this information. <laughs> give me a uh, give me a businessy role, uh, Sharon Kirk, as you try to emotionally bully Ned. A ten. I've nine, Ooh. and then my modifier is one. So ten. Yeah. So uh, that's a pure success. Uh, Ned kind of looks shamefacedly down, and uh, he's like, "I, I, I know it. I know it." Sharon, I, hell, I, I think of you, I think of you like a sister. You, you, you've been a customer in here so long. I, I don't, I don't even, I don't even see you as, a, as a customer anymore. But I don't know if legally, I can, I can share that with you. Ned, I'm going to give you three seconds to share this person's name. <laughs> you don't want to make her angry, Ned. Just make you don't want to find out start feeling a what little can bit happen with that golf club. It's not just for bedazzling. Uh, he kind of looks to you, Sharon Kirk, it. a little, a little hurt, and he's like, "Sharon, I didn't didn't know you're running with such a rough, rough crowd." I don't know Basically. if you've seen Game of Thrones, Ned, but you remember that character Grey Worm? He had that spear. I mean, she's gonna do some crazy stuff with that thing. I'm I've suffering seen her. from a little heat exhaustion from being inside a tiny Yaris, either sitting on someone's lap or with someone on my lap, and I need answers. I don't know why the size of my car has to be part of this argument, but okay. Uh, all, all right, all right, all right. I have a small car, and I have a foosball player who cannot stop complaining about it. So between how irate I am and how irate she is, I don't know if you know this, but she punched me once in a grocery store, and I was bruised for about three Lord months. Lord. All, all, all right, all right. I'll, I'll go look, of, I'll go look at my – Sharon Kirk. I'll go look at my records. I'll see what I can find. That's right. If you all wanna, <laughs> Thank you, Ned. Don't rub it in, Sharon. <laughs> <Just> browse. <laughs> Good boy. Good point, Ned. It'll, it'll take a second. I don't. I don't use a computer. I I write it all out, and I have a carbon copy system back there. So just, well, I got to be out of here. You know, in about an hour, Ned. So he's got seventy five hundred moleskin notebooks back there with all of his records. This could take all year. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, ma'am, I'll I'll do it as, as fast as I can. I mean, I love how dedicated you are to the craft that you have written all your records with a feather pen in a moleskin notebook since the 90s. 
I mean, like, it was just it was a habit. I, I never records. <laughs> I never I never saw the need to to upgrade. It just seemed like a lot uh, a lot of extra trouble I didn't need. Yeah, yeah I don't know if you've seen Ned's penmanship. This guy, I mean, the calligraphy. He he'll he'll just when he emails me, it's he will he will draw. I don't know if you've heard of that app, Procreate. He doesn't email with an actual font. He draws it all out in calligraphy, and then he sends me PDFs of his emails. He'll send me an email. It'll take a, it'll take him a week to write, and it'll just be like, "Hey, the candles are coming in next week." And it's just, I I don't even you know before I read his emails, I get a bottle of wine out because that's how fun they are to look at. It's like art. This is well, very concerning because Ned clearly has no concept of hustle up and go. Um, Thank well, you, Sharon, Kirk. <laughs> uh, I want yeah, to be a little kinda... weird. No, no, no go ahead. Did you see the girl? Oh, he's I was just going to, to say that it would be a little weird for a crafts uh, store owner to be expeditious. That You're would right. seem it's a yeah. very leisurely uh, career. Uh, you know, just sitting around, surrounded by balsa wood and model model glue. It is, and a lot and of you're big very, gaps you're gonna be a between customers. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be a don't laid forget your model person. glue gravel. Oh right, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, sure enough, uh, at about three fifteen, he Sharon Kirk he provides you with a meticulously lettered note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that has been folded too many times. Look at this uh, scroll. <laughs> with the name uh, Steve Changer and Steve's address. And uh, he kind of hands it to you with like two hands as if he's giving you something uh, very valuable. And he's like, please, Sharon, don't don't tell anyone I, I did this. And I hope you never ask a favor like this of me again. We appreciate it. Ned. I'm just sorry. I'm sorry you had to break the wax seal on the scroll to show me this. <laughs> I'm gonna fix it for you. <laughs> he um, wax seals every one of these receipts. <laughs> it's like I don't know if you saw uh, what was that big library in Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't watch it. <laughs> Why would you? It's on television. <laughs> um cool you can get your model glue uh uh gravel and uh yeah it's about 315 and you have uh steve changer's address great uh, ned before we go uh what model glue would you recommend for a golf court say like uh golf, i don't know why i said court? it like i don't know why i said it that way uh, I think it might. I've been sniffing this model glue. I was testing. I was testing them out and trying to figure. It out. I can't tell. He gets. He, gets so which, he sniffs that stuff. He gets Canadian. Yeah, which, which, which gotta... one? Gets, yeah, it's the worst possible thing a person can be. Uh, which 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 model glue would you recommend for someone hoping to fix a golf cart on a budget? Is this a scale model of a golf cart? What are we talking? No, this like is a golf course. I, I've driven. I've driven this golf court, and uh, in fact, I, I, I drove the golf cart uh, into the wall of a Seven Eleven, which is why I need the glue. Oh, I, I'm not sure. I, any of the glues we have here would be what you were looking for. Maybe like an auto zone. I mean, as you look, and it kind of shows you a tube, and it's like it's so tiny. He's like, I don't think. I mean, you'd need. Hey, hey, you need all twelve. You need all twelve tubes to to get anything done. You do. You, do I need? Do I need to get Sharon to get the golf club again, Ned? Just tell me. Just tell me which no, model oh, glue right. uh, that this, I need. Uh, this testers. This testers here. I'm not going this anywhere will, else. I'm somewhere. I got to be at five. This testers will. I think will treat you right. It's great for bonding metal on metal. Perfect. That's all I need. Thank you. Uh, How yeah, much he'll, is it? He'll ring you up. That's uh, it's, it's seven twenty-five. <laughs> do you have Do you have layaway? <laughs> well, not not for a tube of, uh, of glue. I'll get your glue, gravel. I got to get to Paul. 
Oh, thank you. I'll pay you back. Do you take Apple uh, maybe Pay? Maybe I can I can rake I can rake your yard or something. Uh, you need any light bulbs replaced? I think you can't. I you know odd jobs. I might be swinging some light bulbs with this golf club later to blow off some steam. So I might take you up on that. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just have to do other things because you know golf golf uh, go karting go karting doesn't pay exactly uh, yet. I'm hoping to fix that. Well, soon. if you go pro, you it's work much, harder. It's much like comedy in that sense, uh, but uh, still more lucrative. If you are, can be one of those five or six pro golf carters, though, I mean, you're raking in the millions. Well, I'm, I'm at go karts now. I'm trying to move into golf carts. Oh, I, uh, I did I say golf carts? Yeah, that's. I'm trying to move There's in. There's so much golf glue cars. in here. I swear, it's, <laughs> it's like, uh, is that, you know, he runs these model trains and that fake smoke. It's like, I think I have an allergy to it. It's like doing mushrooms. Mm. Yeah, it's a unique, unique smell. Well, I'm just happy that I've got this glue and we've got a clue. We know who to go talk to now. We're going to go to the Changers. Let's get back in the Yaris. I, as you, as you're all leaving, uh, Sharon Kirk, uh, Ned kind of like grabs your arm gently, and he's like, "Sharon, I hope you're doing okay." Thanks, Ned. Thanks. I just think uh, about the three years. I know that you and Wesley were friends, and <laughs> you know I was always jealous that you guys still hung out when he wasn't talking to me. He'd come over and you guys would talk basketball in the backyard and Yeah, that's those were good. Those were good times. He's a good he's a good man. He was. He was. If you were to guess where what part of Arizona a Saguaro would be in, it would what would you say? Like is that you know, it's not and there's also oh. what are the cactuses that have the uh they're like um, they're I don't know what they're called, but they're they're kind of like they almost look like trees. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I'd say southern southern Arizona. Southern Arizona, okay. Mm -hmm. Ned, of all the climate backgrounds to green screen yourself on, would you say desert would be in the top easiest to to? Green well, screen. I, I don't know anything about that that green screen stuff. Give me the give me the practical effects any day. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Anyway, thanks thanks for coming in, y'all. Yeah. Always always happy to to meet Sharon's friends. Feel free to come by the party on Saturday, Ned. Oh, I'll be there. I was I'll planning on it. All right. Good. I'm bringing the s'mores for the fireplace. Oh, that's great. You guys hear that? We're going to do s'mores. Oh, I heard. I just <laughs> remembered that we weren't invited and got mad at you again. You're definitely invited. It's just, it's the, it's a, it's a really, it's 250 for a ticket. And I'd let you in for free, but that wouldn't be fair to the other people that are coming to the party. Fine. Let's go to the Changers. Let's I wonder go. if we should pick up Paul on the way. Okay. I guess he's going to have to go on our lap. Well, you'll be on my lap, and she'll be on your lap. <laughs> I want to pick up Paul on the way. We have. I have to get Paul. Yeah. Um, I hope she doesn't have any allergies to scented candles. She has quite. She has a few allergies. <laughs> What's uh, she allergic to? Um, things that have musk. And uh, okay. and uh, just any sort of um, human, a lot of human <laughs> foods. <laughs> like vanilla? You have to be very careful with her. And she can only have, um, the only human food she can have is, is ground turkey. So she <laughs> eats just purely ground turkey. Well, that's healthy. <laughs> let's, go get, let's go get Paul. Now, is, it, is Paul a, a, a boy or girl? It's a girl. Cool. Schnitzel, schnitzel, doodle, poo, Paul. Um, great. You pick up Paul. You pulled. You pulled off your the plans you needed to. 
Um, and yeah, now, how big is a schnitzel doodle poo? What are we talking weight wise? Uh, about um, 25 pounds. Okay, so a medium sized dog. Uh, yeah. Great. So yeah, you've got a, uh, a dog. It's the smoke from the candles and the overbearing um, <laughs> vanilla scent clearly not doing the dog any any favors. I didn't know that your dog shed so much. It's sticking all the wax. It's when, yeah. she's, it's when she's anxious. She yeah. sheds. Um, but yeah, after that, uh, you can uh, you can pull up to the Changa residence. It is a it is a house in disrepair. Uh, there is a lifted Jeep Cherokee in the driveway. Um, but uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a, a rundown house. Mm. Well, Paul mm. is barking crazy, like crazy. She does not like this house. This is bad vibes. <laughs> we should bring Paul and the golf club for you know protection. So I'm not leaving can... Paul in the Aris, so yeah, of course. And I'll sure I'll bring the golf club. <laughs> I'll pretend like it's you know for Paul. I gotta get these candles home soon, or my yeah, they are soft. <laughs> they <wax>. are <laughs> real soft. <laughs> <laughs> They're kind of like shaping to the uh, roof of the Aris. The whole bulk of the uh, the palette. Pretty soon, we're uh, not going to be able to get out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be uh, driving around in a big candelabra. Yeah, you'll get mummified. You the for that situation, Sharon. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing: it'll be an expensive way to die because <laughs> this is a big part. <laughs> I love it. Uh, cool. Yeah, y'all, y'all are outside, stand, standing outside. The yard's real weedy and uh, kind of patchy. It so is, why don't you take the lead here? It is suspicious here. If this person likes this kind of prettier way to vandalize, it's like they certainly don't bring that home with them. No, but maybe that's a reaction to yeah. to the conditions. I think you might. You know, maybe right. maybe maybe skits maybe skitsy is almost aspirational. I think you're right on it, Gravel. So. All right, we're going to go there. Are we going to ask to talk to his son, or we're going to talk to, to him? We'll just see who answers the door, huh? I think we talk yeah. to him first, yeah. and then we ask, you know, very casually, uh, if you know about uh, about markers, about the markers. Uh, maybe we even say, maybe we say, this is my okay. Here's we 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 say that the arts and crafts guy Ned had, was sold out of the markers, but that he had mentioned that he had bought a ton of markers and we're just curious if we can uh, buy one from him. And that'll be like our cover story. And if that is, yeah. Let's see what happens. Let's try that. We're looking okay. for a marker that was sold out at the arts and crafts store. Could we get one from you? Yeah. He said you bought, you bought 10. Uh, we're and, willing to Venmo him for it. Yes, we were hoping that maybe you had some extras. And uh, uh, Sharon Kirk, uh, why don't you take the lead as you were the one who's most used to uh, uh, punching? <laughs> That's the other Sharon. See, Sharon Kirk no, is Sharon the candle. Kirk. Yeah, but Sharon Kirk is the one who's most used to punching. Uh, yeah, Sharon Kirk is the one that can take the punches. I, I'll, yeah, to be oh, in the vicinity. Right. I, can do, I can take a punch. Sorry. I can take yeah. a punch. Maybe yeah. Since, yeah. since I was a kid, I could take a punch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Being All in right. the vicinity of, of the of angry punching, uh, I feel like you, you punch you me right in the stomach of the solar plexus, and uh, you wouldn't even know well, it hurt. I mean, it definitely yeah. hurts, but you would know that it hurts. I can keep a I can keep a straight face. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, cool. You're gonna knock knock on the door. Yeah. Great. Uh, Friendly you're not. You hear like a, a real deep barking coming from inside the house uh, and some kind of like muffled yelling and hollering. And finally the door opens uh, and a pretty tall guy answers the door. Uh, he's about six, four, um, pretty broadly built. Uh, he's wearing a, kind of a wrinkled Queen Strike t-shirt. He has a shaved head. <laughs> Looks like he's uh, 
probably around 50. Sharon Smith White, you don't have to roll to recognize, you know, this Steve from Foosball. So this, this Steve is down at Nick's used foosballs all the time. Uh, he's he's playing foos and he's getting in a lot of fist fights in the parking lot uh, before and after these games. Uh, and you just uh, you can just place him uh, right there. And he has a, a large it's kind of some kind of mixed breed dog, but definitely a mastiff. Uh, it's got a thick leather collar and it's kind of barking. And when it sees Paul, <laughs> it oh, boy, it just uncorks more barking. And it's kind of like banging on the uh the screen door which seems uh like it's maybe barely connected to the frame and uh steve's like kind of like looks at you three and he's like uh yeah not not interested <laughs> and I, so he I goes to up, like close the door i pick up first of all i pick up paul and i put him around the back of my neck and i hold him like a <laughs> that's the way to keep him safe i hold both of his all of his legs down like this and I say, Steve, you get your ass out of here. We got questions for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, give me a <laughs> give me a businessy roll for this, and it's going to take a pure or a critical success. <laughs> got seven. Seven. That is not a uh, pure or critical success. You can push it if you want. That would mean you check a box of stress. Uh, but that would mean that the consequence for failing is even worse than it would have been. But it lets you re-roll your dice if you want. Or you can take mm -hmm. take the seven and, and a, a new a new angle. Can I if he doesn't let us if he doesn't come out then can I try instead to break his door down? Oh yeah, you could do it something else. I just mean that you can't try to persuade him to come out unless you Yeah, I'm him. done persuading and I wanna get okay. I wanna kick that door down. All right, great. All right, yeah, Steve, he's you're gonna walk away from me. I'm we're coming in. If you're not coming out, Steve, we're coming in. Hey, he's closing the door. So if you want to try to uh, kick it open, you can give me a Chicago style roll. And for those you have advantage, you uh you take yeah. the lower of the two. Yeah, yeah you know, you know, yeah, eleven. Whoa, great. So yeah, he's going to close it, and you just kind of like, like just like in the movie Three Hundred. Remember that kick he does. Uh, uh, Sharon Smith White, you just do one of those straight oh, leg kicks, like, and that <laughs> flappy screen oh, door is no match. Yeah, and you've got your dog and maybe the <laughs> golf club tucked in your armpit. Uh, but the door completely gives way uh, the screen door. Um, and uh, Steve is kind of pushed back on his heels, and uh, he's like, What the fuck? He's like, we asked you nicely, Steve, we asked you to come out. He's like, what? What are you doing? You can't just break into my house. I can, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've proven we, have, we can. <laughs> we have questions for you about a gold marker. Here's the thing: we just what? want to buy a gold marker. See, I don't all have we any. Want. We heard you, you bought a bunch any. from Ned. Ned told us. Ned told us all for for my kid. Uh, Sharon Kirk, give me a uh, give me a snoop roll while you're standing here. Eight, an eight. Uh, you see, there's like there's like punch holes in the walls in this house. You can see uh, as you're kind of like standing there taking it. There's definitely some uh, some holes in the drywall. Um, oh, Sharon, I, I see you tearing up. What's brings back <laughs> memories? You're very nostalgic right now. <laughs> It looks like uh, someone does a lot of swearing in his house. I take all four of Paul's legs in one hand so I can hold him with one hand around my neck, and I and I gently grab Sharon's hand with my other hand to squeeze it in support <laughs> for this moment she's going through. Thank you. Thank um, you. When you kind of jog his memory, seems like, oh yeah, I did for my for my son. I bought him, he needed him for for school. Trey, get down here. Trey. <laughs> Uh, and after a few uh, minutes, a uh, a teen boy comes down. Um, he's kind of, you know, he's pockmarked with acne. He's wearing uh, a very oversized uh, T-shirt, um, a black T-shirt and uh, some kind of like ratty jeans. And he kind of like looks at his dad and he looks at you and he looks at the uh, screen, the bashed in screen door, uh, uh, kind of the whole scene. He's like, yeah. What? what do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> and his dad, you know his what dad's this like, is about? 
you there's uh markers they want to they want to buy you want to buy one of your markers right you want to buy one of his gold markers yeah we we uh we heard really great things about your school project yeah we hear you got a big project going on at school <laughs> it's like uh yeah all right I'll, I'll go get one what's the project trey what's the big project at school uh we're uh we're drawing a, a map of the colorado river and ev everywhere it goes in gold why are you marker? doing that in gold marker uh for extra credit I mean, I gotta be I honest. These so details good. sound very realistic. Thank you. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, it if sounds you like something you do at school, honestly. <laughs> and you draw a map Rabble. of Colorado. You know, Rabble Rabbit. You can give me a gut, <laughs> uh, gut reaction roll, and you get advantage on those. You can take the lower of your two dice, and um, uh, you can re-roll it. Yeah, four. <laughs> that was the that was the best you got. I rolled twice. I rolled twice. I got a three and a one. <laughs> so you re-rolled the one, and what'd you get? Well, I just got. A, I rolled a three, and then I rolled a one. Okay, cool. So you you get to re-roll that one because you get advantage on oh, okay. uh, because of your go karts hobby. Okay, so re-roll that one and add, and what'd you get that time? I got a three. So you got a six and you had one, which is your skill for a total of seven. Um, so, I've always uh, been an achiever. I've never, <laughs> I've never been uh, anything but. It's, it's, it's hard to say. It's like you get like a, a, a nervous vibe off of this kid, but you can't, you can't tell if it's because three weirdos just kicked in his screen door or if, uh, if he might be withholding something. Say, Trey, can we see your project, Trey? Uh, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a school. I left it at school. Tell us one. Tell us one area of the Colorado River. What's one of the states that the Colorado River runs through? Uh, Colorado. And his dad is kind of like, yeah. See? All right. I mean, that's true. Yeah. What about another state? Yeah. I mean, it's a project, right? You should know all of them. If you've been coloring in gold marker, shouldn't you know all of the states? Uh. Uh. Cal California. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Re I don't remember. I don't remember all of them. No, California is incorrect. Trey, I don't, I don't know. We I actually made, didn't know uh, that. I didn't know that. Thank you, Gravel. <laughs> I asked a question that I really didn't have the answer to. I realized I didn't know. It seems like yeah, California, California buys water from Colorado, from the Colorado River, but it does not actually flow through California. Oh, which you yeah, would that's know what I meant. You, that's, no, it's no, that's not. What I'm, that's what I meant. No, it isn't. Right. Trey. This is the point in the movie when Gravel Rabbit realizes he's capable of more than he than he knew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, is it? That's not what it is. Steve kind of like this. steps in. He's like, "What? What is this all? What is this all about? Why are you grilling my kid? Do you want to buy a marker or what?" Hey, do you, uh, does Steve? Does your son have any nicknames? I don't know. The uh, shit heel of uh, I don't know. Does he have any nicknames T that his friends Rod? call him, not you? I don't know. I don't hang out with them. I don't. I. I have no idea what they're doing up there. You have any nicknames, Trey? <laughs> uh, he kind of like. Huh? He kind of like looks names? at the carpet. He's like, <laughs> no. Do we believe him? You can give me a gut. No. Give me a gut uh, reaction roll. 
Uh, any of you ah. can do it if you want. <laughs> oh, I can. I don't have an advantage, so I got a five. I got a five. <laughs> so you can't. Yeah, you can't tell. I can't her. read this. So you know what I'm gonna do? If you don't tell us you have nicknames, my dog right now is so terrified from your big ass dog that keeps barking. If I rub this dog on your clothes, this spur will never come out. There's so much hair he's gonna shed on you. It's <laughs> it's gonna be a nightmare. It's gonna be worse than glitter. It might be a weird wow. threat, Trey, but she means it. <laughs> I've done it before, and I am not afraid to do it to someone under 18. <laughs> I like that you modified your threats. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, no, that's right. Um, uh, yeah, if nobody else wanted to do the gut reaction roll, uh, Sharon, you can give me I, a... Uh, I rolled a five. Okay, so yeah, both of you, you just can't read this kid. Uh, but you can give me a, a, a business roll, um, Sharon Smith-White. Uh, seven. A seven. Uh, yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, my, my MC name is, uh, is Skitsy. <laughs> and as he says that, uh, his dad is like, uh, oh, look, you gotta go. If you're not gonna buy a marker, get out of my house. I don't know what you think kicking down my my door, Sharon. But I mean, we're gonna we're gonna finish this up Friday night down in Nick's. Yeah, we are. But we're gonna finish this up we're, well, Friday night. But we're gonna finish this up right now because you know this has been my whole day dealing with this skitsy stuff. And <laughs> she's been in the she's been in my tiny Yaris for hours. I have been literally Damn. melting in a Yaris to figure out who's <laughs> been. Like Right all over our neighborhood. And Did you all know, signs yeah. point. Your well, son's yeah. DJ name is spray painted all over this neighborhood. And I don't know what you think about the lifestyle watch, but we're putting it on the, the doorstep for him. And we're writing Trey. We're going to say Trey's the guy who's been tagging our neighborhood. Trey, whatever you're like, Changer. Trey Changer. Uh, Steve like, you looks at Trey's like, you. buying those markers. You use those markers to tag the neighborhood? And his like jaws like flexing. And uh Trey's like, uh yeah, just like once or once or twice, like it was not even I get a... the dog right one inch away from his shirt. It's like <laughs> yeah, I, 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 a few times, God. Look, I'll I'll I, I'll stop, all right. I mean, I guess I'll we really didn't have, we didn't even know what we wanted you to do till right now. We would just really? like it. No. How do you have you Trey? Have you researched how to clean up this marker? I would like it cleaned off my basketball hoop because I mm. thought it was, you know, to calling me schizophrenic, and I don't want to think about that every time I'm out there shooting some free throws. Yeah, my yeah, mom thought like, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's like schizo, but like it's like my own like sick twist on it you know like 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 skitsy yeah i don't know i'll I know find a way to clean it off Ray, i admire your creativity but we have to find a more constructive way for you to communicate your adroit ability <laughs> spin spin music i'm an all old I know is, yeah. all, all right. i know is you're lucky we don't have any legal authority <laughs> Uh, cool. So now this is kind of this climactic moment. Uh, the three of you all can give me businessy roles, unless you want to argue for a different style or a different skill. Um, and I'm going to need two out of three of these to be a success. Businessy role. Yeah, businessy. Remember, you can push if you if you want to try to re-roll it. Uh, push if you want to re-roll one. If you want to re-roll the whole roll. Oh, okay. I got a nine. I got a, Sorry, well, I got a nine. Going? Yeah, I got a nine. I got a nine. That's I good. got a one. And what did you get, uh, Sharon Smith White? <laughs> nine. A nine also. And uh, I got a one, which is uh, which should be impossible because you pull <laughs> two d6s and add them together. So it should be a two. Oh, no. I didn't know I had uh, to add them together. I thought it was just a. I thought it was oh, just. Oh, no. Sorry. One. Yeah, you always add okay. them together. Uh, I got a one and I got a one and another one. You got a two. That is a critical fail. You don't add a modifier to it. So yeah, uh, the two Sharons kind of 
are are delivering a, a pretty convincing uh uh convincing argument and gravel rabbit is like clearly is not striking the tone but the two sharons kind of do the job and steve's like yeah br- bring me those pins now and uh trey runs up to his room and he uh he brings back three pins he's like this this is this is the only ones I've left. And Steve kind of like snatches them and he hands them to you, Sharon Kirk. And he's like, he's like, there, t- take those. I don't know. Put them in the trash, whatever, whatever you want. I'll make sure. I'll make sure he doesn't get any more. Thank you. And may I say, I love that Queensryche shirt. My, my, <laughs> my husband was a huge fan of Queensryche. Yeah. It's a uh, jet city woman is the uh is the shirt um he's like oh hell hell yeah he kind of gives you the kind of his like attitude changes to you like a little, <laughs> a little bit i never listened to it but i know that he loved it he he loved yeah, it's it it's pretty heavy it's pretty yeah heavy. he liked it. he liked that heavy stuff yeah all right well sorry about this little shit i'll uh don't worry i'll i'll drive him around and have him and have them clean it off. Oh, you're going to have to do that. If you don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said I was going to do it. Okay, so sometimes you're full of shit, Steve. So I just want to make sure that if you don't do this on Friday night, uh, you're or getting what? hot. You don't you're getting, with or what? <laughs> you're getting hot dogs for the whole group. And I'll make sure that you hold, <laughs> you're held accountable for that. <laughs> All right, it'll be done. Right, it'll be done. Okay, right. if it is done, and and you win foosball, which you won't, I do feel bad about the door. I'll replace your door, but only if you win and your son cleans up all these tags. All right, you're <laughs> on. You know, on Saturday night, I'm having a candle party. It's a candle sales party. <laughs> And if you and Trey want to come by, you're welcome to come by. And I and I'm do, I'll do a two for one if you guys want to come. Oh my God, Sharon! He's like, no, no, I'm not doing that. And that doesn't sound like anything I want to do. Uh, okay, I mean, I'm just trying to be a neighbor here. I mean, it's it's a really fun thing, and it's I mean, they only come around once a month, so no, I don't like it's candles. a racket, I don't Steve. Want to... It's too overpriced. Don't. Yeah. Oh, well, All I right. thought we were on the same team, Sharon, but that's fine. <laughs> With everything except for I just, if you just give me one candle or a discount. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give each of you a candle. <laughs> one for Gravel, hey. one for Sharon. <laughs> wow. This Great. whole day has been worth it. <laughs> they're going to, I mean, they, the two that fell, I'm going to, they're, they're a little broken, but I'll give but you. They're so, they're so, uh, uh, melted, they're moldable again. I feel like I could mold it into anything. It's just basically liquid. At That's this point. what's great about these candles. They last for yeah. like five years because you can just, once they burn, you just, you just mold them Re-shape back. Them 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 mold. It, they call them forever candles. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, cool. Well, Steve is going to shove you out of his house, uh, kind of herd you out of his house. And, uh, yeah, you feel confident that you have uh, you've resolved this. You've you've found out who it was, and you convinced him, or at least his dad, to uh, make sure that he takes care of it. Just for fun, as a quick epilogue, uh, Sharon uh, Smith White, give me a coordination roll for this uh, this uh, foosball match that you would have with Steve. And let's see if you're going to replace that Ooh, screen door or not as 11. an epilogue. Ooh. You beat him. You don't have to replace the screen door. <laughs> nice work. We're a little over time, so I uh, can't do any more uh, epilogue scenes, but uh, you <laughs> three were great. Um, yeah, this is such an easy game to run because I just have to sit here and laugh uh, and then once every 30 minutes ask somebody to make a roll, uh, <laughs> great. Which, which is great. Um, but uh, yeah, w- well done. Uh, overtime by 20 minutes, not as bad as my usual uh, <laughs> speed by it. So um, I will I will say goodbye to our players, but I'll remind everyone out there, definitely check out the Valley Heat podcast if you want. It's a ton of fun. And I believe, Christian, there's a 
new episode coming out any, any day now, right? Yeah, it's coming out uh, definitely this week. But at least by next week. But you should start at episode one because it actually tells like an ongoing story. And uh, so check it out in episode one and find uh, all of these players uh, out uh, online and in the world where they're doing their funny and, and great stuff and uh, check them out. And uh, yeah, so I'll say goodbye to our players and I'll just do a couple quick announcements. Thanks, Thanks guys. It was great playing with you. Away. Yeah, yeah, great. Y'all were, y'all were so good. Uh, uh, come back uh, to Stream of Blood this Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific for Blood and Blades. The Stream of Blood shared setting Blades in the Dark series. Jared and the Weird Sisters return for a new score on the darkened streets of Duskwall. Uh, Blades of the Dark is such a fun game. Uh, definitely check that out. Sunday at 10 a.m., it's Vampires of Pittsburgh Lockdown. Check that out as they abandon Steel City for the equally unfriendly streets of Philadelphia. And next Tuesday, Taste of Blood is going to give the keys of the kingdom to the beating goddamn heart of the channel, Ross Bryant. Tune in at 7 p.m. for his original Dungeons & Dragons 5e two-parter, Sanguine Seas, with players Holly Laurent, Rashawn Scott, and Edgar Blackman. That's going to be amazing. Check that out starting next Tuesday. The Valley Heat podcast is available on your podcatcher of choice. Uh, so check that out. Stream of Blood is also a podcast. Uh, check that out as well. Subscribe, download, rate, and review. Valley Heat is, a, is an RPG that uh will be available for free on my website very soon we're just kind of putting the f the final bits of polish on it you can check out my website at occupiedhex.com if you sign up on the mailing list you'll find out when that game comes out and how you can get it and you can also get free dice it's probably the best mailing list you're ever going to sign up on uh because you really only get one email a month and you can get free dice that's it's pretty good it's pretty good uh the absolute best way to support stream of blood uh, is to subscribe on Twitch and to spread the word. Tell your friends and uh, loved ones about it. Uh, you can check out our new website, an insane merch store. There's so much merch and it's incredible. Uh, so go check that out. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit. Uh, the best way to connect with Jared, Clint, and all the other SOBs is on the Discord, Stream of Bloods, Server of Blood. And we're also on Facebook if you want to check that out. Special thanks to the producers and partners, Brian Baldinger and Clinton Trucks, social media manager, Megan Arch, SOB podcast producer, Andrew Strouther, YouTube content, content producer, Matt Moynihan, the Stream of Blood logo, opening animations, and the whole new look is courtesy of art director, Jill Petracek, who also did my new site. So while you're enjoying the Stream of Blood site, check out my site. Jill does amazing work. Thank you all so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time Saturday. <laughs>